Correct. All the cabins they might pass by have been checked. Remember to report to lead researcher Asta. We'll deal with problems outside the base zone later. Huh, it's you. Sorry, this is embarrassing. We suddenly had some stuff come up. I wanted to take care of it before you arrived, but I can't seem to even get a break around here. Never mind about that. Here, this is for you. I made it this morning, and I've been keeping it warm. No, she had pudding this morning. I made it especially for you. I spent a long time wondering what to give you. In the end, I realize I should stick to what I'm good at. Miss Asta loves my fried rice, so I hope you like it too. Sorry it's so noisy here. I wanted to find somewhere quieter where I could get your feedback, but... Miss Asta said that gratitude has to be sincere. It's a shame that I had to finish it up so hastily. Some big shot suddenly decided to visit the space station today. Everyone has been in a hurry since the announcement. They're all worried that a bad impression could damage Madame Herta's reputation. Miss Asta said that the guest appears to be Madame Herta's research partner. If he's doing research with her, he must be famous throughout the galaxy. Ah, look at the time. The guest is almost here. If you're curious, just follow the crowd. Miss Asta and I will be there soon. Wow, it's the first time I've seen such a spectacle. Even the top brass. So this visitor is... <clears throat> Get ready. Hypothesis. Thought always precedes mm. word. Hey. Huh? And yet, I can't find the words for this moment. It's good to see you, Asta. I apologize. I'm four minutes and 13 seconds earlier than the appointed time. I hope it's not a bother. Of course not, Mr. Skrulem. Welcome to Herta Space Station. No need for formalities, Asta. Herta Space Station is where knowledge converges. Here we celebrate the equality of thought. Such collaboration between organic life forms is magnificent and efficient. You're rebuilding the space station far quicker than I could have imagined. We appreciate your high price, Mr. Skrulem. Would you like me to show you around? Since the last summit, we've launched several new research projects focused on silicone-based matrices. Well, that sounds lovely, but I do have a meeting with Herta, so let's put the new surprises on hold for now. Madam Herta should be in her office. I'll take you there. Right this way. Sure. And you are? Ah, hello, young sir. I've heard so much about you. Herta talks about you often. She's quite curious about you, as am I. What is it like to live in symbiosis with a Stellaron? I hope we'll have sufficient time in the future to get to know each other and answer this question. Sorry, I wanted to show you around, but now I don't think I'll be able to get away. All right, see you later. Oh, strange. It should be around here somewhere. Maybe it's hidden inside Madame Herta's portrait. Huh? Uh, do you need something? If you're looking for the front desk, just go straight through those doors. Wait a second. I know you. I saw you chatting with Captain Arlen just now. You must be the rising star who caught Madame Herta's attention. Allow me to introduce myself. 
I'm Leonard, a cybersecurity engineer here at the space station. You probably know that this place was recently attacked by the Antimatter Legion. In the chaos, the master control system for each zone was paralyzed. Now that the station is being rebuilt, my job is to repair equipment and restore the space station's cybersecurity. But during the repair process, I discovered some anomalies. The access records show that a third party other than the Legion invaded while the master control system was paralyzed. Mm, some have surmised the same as you. We suspect that it may have been the Stellaron Hunters. It's an elusive group and very dangerous. Every member is on the IPC's wanted list. They include a super hacker from Punk Lord. I'm ashamed to admit that I've lost to her once before. A while ago, I discovered her whereabouts during a screening process. I was planning to follow the clues to find more details about her, but I fell into her trap. Can you guess what happened next? She reverse hacked my device, sent out a bunch of spam, made a video game open to the space station, and told everyone that an idiot named Leonard made a big silly mistake. Ugh! I don't want to think about it. Now that everything is calmed down, I thought they'd be on my case already. The silver lining? Madame Herta was generous enough to allow me to continue investigating this matter. I wouldn't go that far. I'm just a nobody. You think Madame Herta would remember me? To put it simply, the leaders have given me an opportunity. How could I not cherish it? If I can make up for my mistakes and do a good job, I may have a chance to prove myself. This time, I plan to start from inside the space station and see if I can find some clues to trace the intruder's steps. Maybe I can find the blind spot I missed before. I designed a decoding program. Look, it looks like a camera, but it's actually a detector. We should be able to find hidden clues with it. Just like this. Oh, uh, uh, that's, uh... What are you talking about? This looks like... Oh, a drop of sweat? Unbelievable! Why would something like this be in the space station? The staff wouldn't even dare scribble on the wall, let alone leave a drop of sweat! So this is what we're looking for? This suspicious evidence? <sighs> it wasn't what I was expecting, but... Wait a second. Uh, let me take a look. Oh, oh, I see. This is electronic graffiti that appears to represent punk Lordian symbols. If I'm not mistaken, this should be some kind of automatic encryption. We need to decipher it if we want to find any culpatory evidence. Ugh, you got me there. I got caught up in our conversation. I wasn't paying attention. Ugh, let me think. Uh, maybe I've been under too much stress recently and I subconsciously want a friend. Anyway, if I were to find clues related to the Stellaron Hunters, wouldn't that be helpful to you too? Ah, just do me a favor! It won't take up too much of your time. Here, just point it at the graffiti on the wall. To death. Did you see that? It seemed like something popped up here, then Void Rangers jumped out. But look, just like I guessed, this graffiti is encrypted. If we decipher it, we can see some hidden information. The surveillance camera captured her face. Silver Wolf. It's 
exactly the same as the photo on the IPC's wanted list. Let me see what she was up to. Is this a transmitter beacon? Oh, I see. She probably ran into the Antimatter Legion during the invasion, then used this beacon to teleport the enemies somewhere else. We accidentally activated the beacon again just now, and they were brought back. Jeez! Stellaron hunters have the ability to stow enemies away like that? Beacon transmission that doesn't require a power source and can be implemented solely through computation? No wonder they were able to break into the space station. With this, I'm afraid not even Madame Herta's office is safe. Well, I don't share your optimism. If it wasn't for you, I'd probably be lying on the ground right now. Anyway, let's work together. Can you let me have some fun this time? Our last few operations turned out to be pretty dull. She makes it seem easy. Is she really looking at the Curio Collection Index? Judging by how calm she is, she must have been in this room for a while. Maybe she was waiting for someone. I'm not sure what happened after that. Let's search somewhere else. Your fake ID info is ready. Ah, so that's what happened. She sneaked in first, then helped her partner in through the main door. It's a classic hacking operation. Let's see. The registered name is... Leonard Colliwell? How is this possible? She... she used my identity. I... I never noticed that there was an issue with this record. I subconsciously glanced right past it when I saw my own name. She's so cunning. It's an honest mistake! The reaction of any ordinary person is to check for unfamiliar names, right? I mean, who would think to check their own name? The graffiti's location is quite... interesting. It feels like she's playing a game with us. One dot leads to another. I heard from a friend that the hackers on Punk Lord have a tradition. When they hack, they purposely leave something behind for people to discover. Kind of like throwing down the gauntlet. They call this the Punk Lord mentality. There can only be competition when there is rivalry. And there can only be excitement when there is competition. Life's a game, and having fun is what's most important. I don't understand that way of thinking. But it seems like this graffiti might have been left behind for us on purpose as a clue. The same thing happened last time as well. I was so close to the target, but got obliterated in the final battle of information. You're right. It doesn't help to dwell on past failures. Thank you. Ah, she seems to be leaving. Let's keep up. Huh? Is this section of the record damaged? She went through the wall and disappeared. That's highly unlikely. I bought this detector just last week. The refund guarantee hasn't even expired yet. Uh, uh, let's talk about that later. Hold on, I got it! It might be an effect from Mercurio! There was a pre-established folded space here, and the intruders found it and took advantage of it! No wonder she kept going through the Curio Collection Index. This space is connected to the Stellaron room. Do you still remember it? That's where they put the Stellaron inside you! Huh? What are you muttering about? Hmm... Why would they leave you here if their objective was the Stellaron? With her capabilities, all she would have needed to do was make another beacon. She would have been able to escape with the Stellaron no problem. Huh? There's no graffiti here. Oh, we're doomed! The trail has gone cold. 
Ugh, so strange. Did she really leave just like that? She came all this way and didn't take anything with her, nor leave anything behind. Oh, um, they did leave you behind. <clears throat> Sorry, that sounded better in my head. It must have been a terrible feeling waking up in a place that was completely unfamiliar to you. Oh, me? <laughs> That's how I feel when I wake up every day. I can't help but feel there's more that they're after. <sighs> I really hope I can find something that's useful to you. Otherwise, I'll feel bad for having you do so much work for nothing. <sighs> the more I talk about it, the worse I feel. I should probably find something that I can do. Hmm, there's a rating pistol here. I wonder what my rating would be. Whoa, look here. There's a strange access log in the rating pistol's compartment. It looks like the log time occurred during the Legion's invasion. The researchers would have already been evacuated by then. Could it have been her? In which case, she didn't leave immediately. She implanted the Stellaron inside you and then fiddled around with the rating pistol for a while. Could it be that... I just realized something. We need to go to the Curio Collection Room on the other side. I just remembered that Madame Herta has a game cartridge named Punk Lord Mentality in her collection. You remember it, right? It's actually on the list of missing curios. I wasn't able to put the two together before. If the hacker has a personal objective other than the Stellaron Hunter's mission... I, I got it! I got it now! The Stellaron Hunter's operation was just a cover for her! That's right! She was so interested in the Curio Collection Index that she stayed in the space station even after her mission was complete. This was what she was truly after. She knew we would be looking for the Stellaron Hunters and used it as her cover. Very smart. To be expected of someone from Punk Lord. Hold on, though. Something doesn't add up. The curios are Madame Herta's most prized possessions. All the visit requests are sent to her office from the computer in the main control room. Some researchers tried to gain access to the curios for research purposes once, but they didn't get proper authorization. She caught them all red-handed. You got me there. But with the skills of this hacker, I do think it's possible. We should go and check the main control room. Wait, don't move. Oh, I get chills just looking at the space station monitors now. Let me investigate first. Just perfect. Not only did she shut off all the access logs, she shut off all the terminal transmissions too. I thought it was the Legion that did this. This wouldn't have been a high-priority issue. The space station's to-do list is ridiculously long at this point. I am curious, though. She paused the terminal transmissions, but didn't touch the local data at all. I really don't get her. As a Stellaron hunter, she leaves the Stellaron behind. As a hacker, she doesn't delete the local log. Hmm. There's an external port here. I'm gonna plug in and take a look. Relax, friend. I've done this a million times. Look at this agreement. See? I was right. There was something fishy about the local data she left behind. Now we can browse through the curio access logs. Huh? That can't be right. This curio doesn't seem to have ever left the space station. Hmm, from the way things look, yes. The records show that this curio was last sent to... Madame Herta's office? And then it disappeared? I'm seriously confused. What did she come here for? She wouldn't have put the graffiti up just to mess with us, would she? <sighs> 
No, if I start thinking like that, I may as well give up now. I have to fully investigate every lead, or I'll really be out of a job. That's not gonna happen. I'll say it again. I don't care what Runmei said to you, but there's no chance we're shutting down this simulated universe. Herta, I've made my decision. Question. What have we invested into this project? Hundreds of system hours, the resources of an entire planet, and the most advanced technology in the entire universe. And what have we gotten in return? Unknowns, confusion, and a series of errors. In the beginning, we defined the simulated universe as a miniature world that could be used to discover the traces of the eons. But now, it's become something far removed from its original purpose. The simulated universe is bound to make errors. You said that yourself, and that's exactly what we're experiencing. Why is that a problem all of a sudden? I adore the vast amount of knowledge, but I cannot accept that the simulated universe remains simply a pending contract waiting to be attended to. Herta, think about it. How many surprises has this project given you? And how many disappointments has it given you? Simulated universe never disappointed me. You are what disappoints me, Skrulem. Do you really think of yourself as someone so exceptionally amazing? <laughs> right now, you're more like, like, like someone from the Nitwit Society. <sighs> Herta, I don't mean to question you, nor do I want to deny the hard work you've put forth for the simulated universe. I just want to give more room for knowledge and inspiration to grow freely. That's enough. Leave if you don't want to be part of this. Go tell the other two yourself. Oh, and take your tech with you. I don't need it. I can go find Adrian Taylor or the red-nosed old man from Epsilon or even the Intelligentsia Guild. At least they won't quit halfway. Skrulem, we've known each other for a long time. This is the first time I feel that... You're nothing but a piece of ice-cold metal. My apologies, sir. This all started with me. I was the one that brought up the request to end our academic collaboration. Don't get me wrong, I have nothing against Herta or the project. The simulated universe is a great experiment, and Herta is a true genius. However, we have our differences when it comes down to our long-term vision for the future. These differences will often manifest into bias, and bias will get in the way of the formulation of knowledge. Deep down, I want to continue to believe in Herta. The question is whether one should end a collaboration that no longer holds true to its original intent. From an objective standpoint, I should end it immediately. Are you worried about her mental state? Thank you for the humor. It is good for tense moments like these. The emotions of organic life are like tides it is my fault for not noticing the trajectory of the moon. Let Herta be alone for a while, so she can calm her emotions. It'll be beneficial for our negotiations later as well. As for the simulated universe, if that's the reason you're here, maybe I can help in answering your questions. Hmm. Search. Bonfire in the depths of the woods. A lone stone sword points to the stars. Punk Lord mentality. That is no ordinary curio, my friend. That is a love letter a galaxy ranger has written for the universe. Young sir, how much do you know about Punk Lord? It is a planet made of data and symbols. The edges of reality and illusion are blurred in Punk Lord as are its days and nights. 
An ether cartridge is a chip that punk lordian hackers use to edit reality. The ways through which a hacker perceives and modifies the world are recorded on the chip. It's a recording of the hacker's life and proof of their existence. The one on the space station belonged to someone truly legendary. He became a galaxy ranger by accident and spent many long years traveling among the stars. He encountered countless fascinating individuals and saw wonders witnessed by few. Many of the records and details recorded therein are beyond the knowledge of even the IPC and the Intelligentsia Guild. That is why it became part of the masses of calculation data for the simulated universe. Yes, no need to worry, my friend. The cartridge has never left the space station. It's as I said, it is a very important reference for the simulated universe. That is why its data has been extracted and added to the calculations of the universe model. Herta was probably impulsive and added the cartridge into the simulation without telling anyone, resulting in the item being listed as lost. I understand your concern. If the individual in question did indeed try to hack into Herta's office, then the simulated universe is undoubtedly her next target. As such, Please allow me to offer my limited abilities to assist you with your investigation, sir. As you already know, the simulated universe will be shut down temporarily. It will remain shut until Herta and I come to a clear conclusion. Yes, this is the last chance to investigate the cartridge data. By way of apology for shutting down the simulated universe, I will use my abilities in the universe to provide you with what assistance I can. This is my recommendation. Please take your time to consider it. D did you hear that? I was so scared I couldn't utter a single word. The simulated universe? Shut down? That's Madame Herta's biggest project. I can't imagine how mad she'd be if it fell through. Wait, this isn't... My fault, is it? If I'd been able to stop the enemy's invasion, would Mr. Skrullum be less pessimistic? <sighs> You're right. Ugh, this is terrible. I feel like I'm incapable of doing anything. Still, beating myself up all the time won't help either. We're here for the cartridge. At the very least, we must try and see this thing through. Having heard what Mr. Skrullum said, you're entering the simulated universe to continue the investigation, aren't you? <sighs> I'm afraid I won't be able to accompany you. I'll be helping Mr. Skrullum monitor the system's internal data flow from the office. <sighs> I'm so nervous. This is the first time I've been involved in something so big. Anyway, I'll be cheering for you. Well, sir, are you ready? Very well. Get going, we shall. I will be sending you into the simulated universe using an alternative method. It might feel a little different than usual. This will help us quickly locate the cartridge in the vast sea of data. We'll start with this data link. Now, please prepare yourself for a deep dive with your consciousness. Young sir, are you all right? You are now inside the data link of the ether cartridge. Look around and tell me what you discover. Hacker. Oh. Conclusion. That is a holographic record that the simulated universe has created. In here, regardless of how large or small, all variables are saved, including outsider traces. You were right. The enemy's invasion has spread to the deepest parts of the simulated universe. They were only a hair away from the ether cartridge's data link. What we are seeing are the projections of what happened in those moments. Young sir, please stay still. Allow me to see what I can do with this record. Hey, you. Why are you staring at me? 
I initiated the simulation flow. This is just a record of the past. She is not actually talking to you. Please listen and don't interrupt her. We may be able to find out more of what we need to know. First off, I'm not obsessed with it. On Punk Lord, the stories of the cartridge are no different from textbooks. I'm not interested in something that everybody already knows about. Secondly, it's not some kind of video game cartridge. It's an ether cartridge. It's the second pair of eyes, second brain, and second heart of the hacker. Do you understand what that actually means? With that cartridge, if a guy went to a movie premiere and bought some mixed popcorn, you'd be able to know the flavor of the fourth kernel he picked out of the bucket. It's truly amazing. Lastly, I'm gonna say it again. I am not obsessed with it. The reason I'm still rambling about it is to make sure that you know how amazing it really is. Do you get it now, Kafka? All right, let's get going. We have to move quickly. This place is different from the rest of the space station. We're on Genius Society turf. It is safe to assume that two people entered the simulated universe, her and her companion. Interesting. Let's see what happened next. You are now taking the point of view of the companion. She will react to your behavior now. Fork in the road, huh? I got this. Wanna pick one first? Give your beloved instincts a try. Technically, she is asking her companion to choose. The record will continue forward even if you don't take any action. Hmm, wrong choice. The correct answer is the path on the right. Hmm, not what we're looking for. It's a bait signal. Ugh, why would Herta put something like this inside the simulated universe? Doesn't she find it annoying when she has to find something herself? Never mind, I miscalculated. Let's try another sector. She's actually on the correct path. She just needs to continue a little further. I trust that she too will realize this soon. We've met only once. Stellaron Hunter, Silver Wolf. We fought against one another before. Herta was there as well. She may have mentioned it to you. In Herta's words, there was no loser in that fight. It was more like a test than a duel. She would attack, and I would defend. Neither of us gave it our all. She wasn't able to break through my defenses, and I wasn't able to stop her from leaving. I never thought our next meeting would take place under these circumstances. I believe the continuation of our last encounter will soon arrive. What the? This was the right way all along. Ugh, Herta's got some psychological tactics going on. Seems like we can now continue forward. Oh, back to the space station again. <gasps> A riddle? W where's the skip button? Eesh. A little narcissistic, isn't she? The whole space station is filled with her face. Portraits, statues, even projections of herself. I was planning on adding a mustache for her, but the spray didn't work. The entire space station feels like it's made of paper, but her portrait is near indestructible. <laughs> She's talking about that portrait in the elevator room, no? Herta commissioned me to design an encryption tool for her. Seems she ended up using it on her portrait. That's correct. The ether cartridge data is in the next room. Our pursuit is coming to an end. Yes, that incongruous feeling has persisted throughout this long pursuit. She came for the Stellaron, but showed a strong interest in the Curios. And just as we found out about the existence of the ether cartridge, she just so happened to show up in the simulated universe. I must admit, 
This feels less like a chase and more like a chance encounter. I recall a story about Punk Lord. It is said that graffiti is a special kind of symbol there. Hackers see reality as a magnificent game and attempt to finish the stage we know as life. Whether it be for competition or for joy, they leave a trail in the places they visit. One symbol after another link up to become a long, long journey that writes the game of life. And would this ongoing affair not be part of such an endeavor? Perhaps this is all nothing more than a game she's decided to play with us. In which case, let us accompany her till the end. Look, we found it. The ether cartridge is here, and it's perfectly intact. There is an unwelcome third party here with us. If what we are seeing constitutes past images of Silver Wolf, then for her to have made it this far would have entailed the disappearance of the cartridge. We can only assume that the facts don't align with the theory. I believe that she was indeed able to hack into Herta's office, but she didn't stay there for very long. After all, even the best hacker wouldn't be able to find a specified target in the vast ocean of the simulated universe's data. Unless... Unless she had someone to guide her there. Ha! Huh. <laughs> you want to explain it to him first? I can see the confusion in his eyes. The final results are on the display table, young sir. Take a closer look if you wish. We have plenty of time left. I will answer any questions that you may have. You've guessed correctly. The person that stands before you is tonight's starring role. She left herself a back door in the office, performed a proxy hack the moment you entered the simulated universe, and found a way to continue alongside us. I must say, she really is a masterful actor. Misdirection is always the most effective method. The graffiti is like a two-way data tunnel. You can use it to retrace the trail she leaves behind, and she can monitor your progress by seeing which pieces of graffiti have disappeared. I fear she may well have had the whole thing planned out before hacking the space station. The graffiti and the back door were all in aid of honing in on just the right moment. I'm sorry. Herta forbade me from disclosing any information beforehand. She made clear that knowledge would not be paramount to this operation, but rather the lack of it. However, the way I see it, the most important elements were dedication and sincerity. The actions of Mr. Leonard drew the target right in. Well then, were you satisfied with this simulated universe journey? Miss Silver Wolf. Huh. You knew it all along, didn't you? I knew it would be hard to fool you. All that talk you were spouting along the way was meant for me, wasn't it? It is a joy and an honor to have the opportunity to face off against you once again. Herta said that this cartridge would be able to lure in the biggest fishes in the universe, she was right. So, the business about shutting down the universe and the argument with Herta was all just an act? You did all that to lure me in? That is up to you to interpret. Herta and I have always been frank with one another. Sharp conversations of that nature happen on a regular basis. It wouldn't be fitting to call it an act. Hmm. <laughs> Miss Silverwolf is truly a talented hacker. Not only did she calculate everything ahead of time, she has numerous variables and aces still to play. News of my sudden visit to the space station was probably the only uncontrollable variable in her plan. And with my arrival came the nightmare of shutting down the simulated universe. That would have ruined her plans and all her preparations. You now know everything about this encounter. Everything? No, no. You're wrong about the most important part. 
You think I came here out of desperation, but I've been bursting with excitement this whole time. Do you know how happy I was when you showed up, Screwlum? I haven't had the thrill of a formidable opponent in such a long time. The Legion is nothing but a bunch of cavemen, and the IPC were a disappointment. Only the society has the talent to provide me with a fun challenge. Reality is nothing but a game. But what's the point of a game if it can't make you happy? An invitation letter and a challenge letter were sent to me from two geniuses. How could I not accept them? Would you have turned them down? You're confident you'll be able to get out of this in one piece. That's right. And I'm bringing this with me. Oh, a copy. You completed it while we were talking just now. Why else would I entertain so much small talk? You're not the only one stalling for time. I'm guessing that Herda is hiding in a corner somewhere, trying to pull off a reverse hack from where I hacked in. You, on the other hand, are responsible for taking me head on, just as you did last time. And I'm looking forward to it. How do you plan on stopping me this time? Are you going to turn the simulated universe into a black box? Or are you going to work with the IPC and put together a cross-galactic encirclement? Screwlem, will I be able to see your true strength this time? The long-awaited result will finally be determined. There will only be one victor today. Please, let me have some fun this time, okay? My apologies, Miss Silverwolf, but none of what you are hoping for will be happening today. You may leave now. Huh? Leave? But why? Aren't you trying to catch me? Don't you want to cuff me and exile me on some distant planet? Your creativity has proven interesting. However, I have nothing to do with your quarrel with the space station. Ergo, I won't stop you. I'm gonna leave with this cartridge, then. That's just a duplicate. Correction, not only is the one in your possession a duplicate, but so is the one here. The real curio was transferred elsewhere at the very beginning. Conclusion, you may share that data freely. What if I attack the space station again? It would have nothing to do with me. But I must warn you, it is likely that someone would step forward to stop you. Then, what if I were to destroy the simulated universe right now? I'm sorry, but that simply isn't possible. Ether editing isn't capable of destroying an entire universe. What is the point of this, then? You guys went out of your way to put together this trap, but don't plan on doing anything at all? That's right. This way, the game that you so carefully orchestrated is now pointless, is it not? There's no point in a game if it's no longer fun. Silver Wolf, I know what you're after. The IPC's shackles won't be able to hold you, and jail is but another game to you. Herta and I came to an understanding. We will no longer enable you and give you what you need. <laughs> How boring. However, Herta felt that this would be too easy on you, and wanted to add something of her own. And that is why, in this very moment, she has reverse-hacked you and located all your inter-astral network accounts. A total of 76 accounts. A very impressive number. How would it be if the IPC were to freeze all of them? Including all of your game records? What? Hey, hold on a minute! And she logged out. How hasty of her. <sighs> Games are always fun in the eyes of a child. But to an adult, they are but one among many ways of solving a problem. It's about time we were on our way. <laughs> a flawless victory! Hope you got a glimpse of Herta's awesomeness, kiddo. 
You think this was complicated? Do you think the Punk Lord hackers are amateurs? I couldn't care less about what happened with the space station, but I will surely repay the favor tenfold to anyone who dares to taunt me. I already notified someone at the IPC to freeze all her accounts. <laughs> She's probably crying in front of her computer right now. <laughs> Thank you, young sir. Your and Mr. Leonard's contributions were a necessity to our victory. Do you have any other questions regarding this incident? Her ultimate goal was always the ether cartridge, but she developed an alternative objective in challenging Herta and me in the process. All those complicated puzzles and unnecessary ploys Nothing more than games, I'll wager. If you are referring to the back doors Silver Wolf left behind, we have cleared out all of them, except for the one in the office. Don't worry. The space station is not as fragile as you think. Whether it's cosmic warfare or the incident that just took place, they're all within Herta's grand plan. Please, ask away. Certainly not. Although Madame Herta and I have our differences in terms of research direction, the simulated universe is our shared pursuit, and nothing will change that. On the contrary, I plan on staying here for a while to see up close what kind of surprises the new branch of the universe has in store for me. There is no one answer to that question, my friend. It holds a different meaning for everyone. To sentimental, organic life forms, it could be the first falling leaf in the change of seasons, or the marks carved onto someone through the passage of time. To the swarm that follows its instincts, it might be the sight of fresh meat in their compound eyes and the restless thirst for sustenance. And for me, perhaps the image of symbols woven together, still able to move the heart. Something great that you call emotions. Of course, I've also heard that the answer is nothing more than a two-digit number. A medium-rare cattle steak, salt-baked Kalia lemongrass, Herman compound milk, and a portion of fried rice prepared by a certain young man on the station. All I need is energy. The form that energy comes in is the same as it is for you. I would never forsake the delights of the culinary world in the interests of efficiency. Now, it is possible that my joints may need a little lubricant every now and again. Well, young sir, our destination may differ, but there are still countless opportunities for our paths to cross. The pursuit of knowledge will always be the best driving force for trailblazing. Uh, so, the reason Madame Herta wanted me to continue the investigation was to lure her out of hiding? That never crossed my mind! Did she know about the traps the hacker left in the space station from the very beginning? She said I did a good job. Can you believe it? I've just been acknowledged by Madame Herta. This is something I'll remember for the rest of my life. I don't have to worry about being fired anymore. This chapter has come to a conclusion. Come, let us close the final back door. It's gone. It's all gone. They seriously left nothing behind. They went too far this time. Too far. All right, all right. Stop with the tantrum. You're not a kid anymore. I am not throwing a tantrum. 
Uh-huh. Anyway, what are you gonna do now, huh? Hack an IPC branch nearby and get your accounts back? Ugh. If it were just one or two accounts, sure. I kind of overdid it this time. I lost basically everything. A branch office probably won't be enough. I'm gonna have to make a trip to Pierpoint. What, you're going alone? That's the IPC's headquarters. Yep. Just me. Why? Do you want to come with? I probably won't be able to. I'm in Elio's next script. Did you forget? Oh, right. That story doesn't sound like it fits me. You guys have fun. I hope you have a good time in Pierpoint as well. Don't worry. I've already got an idea. You see that cloud diner just two kilometers from here? A few temps from the building material logistics department just stepped in. I'm gonna go and become their friend. Getting a move on already? I would have thought you'd at least want to spend some time with that cartridge you were obsessing about. I told you. I'm not obsessed with it. Besides... There's fun to be had along the way. game and that's all there is to it. Hey, it's you! I didn't expect to see you here in the administrative district. How have you been lately? Great to hear. Since the Stellaron crisis subsided, bellabog has been feeling a little more cheerful. We're really grateful for your assistance. Things are going well for me, too. Thanks for asking. You spent so much time in Bellabog on your last visit. You must have passed by here before, right? This is Bellabog's History and Culture Museum, built more than 600 years ago. Last time you visited, it was closed for its 10-year renovation. Now that the Stellaron Crisis is over, we've been able to allocate more manpower to the renovation works. The museum should be open to the public again soon. It's just... We encountered a problem during the renovation process. The Silvermane guards are doing all they can to figure it out. I... <sighs> Sorry. I shouldn't talk about it in the open like this. Hey, why don't I give you a tour of the museum? We can talk inside while I show you around. If you have time, that is. Great! What are we waiting for? Welcome to Bellabog's History and Culture Museum. As you can see, after nearly a hundred days of renovation, the interior looks brand new. However, there's a problem that needs to be resolved before it can open to the public. The museum was established nearly 600 years ago as a memorial to honor Alyssa Rand, the first Supreme Guardian, and the martyrs who gave their lives in the battle against the invaders from beyond the sky. As time went on, new exhibits were continually added to the memorial until it became the museum we see today. Past the reception hall, you'll find the general hall, the museum's largest exhibition room. There are all sorts of exhibits on display, paintings by famous artists, samples of the planet's crust. Visitors can experience the essence of Bellabog's culture in just a few minutes' time. 
I really hope the museum can open up soon. The children here need a culturally enriching environment, especially those from the underworld. But like I mentioned earlier, we're in a bit of a bind. We could really use a helping hand. Here, this is the issue we're trying to deal with. Wow, you're quick. Yes, this exhibit was stolen just recently. It was one of the oldest and most precious items in the General Hall collection. The Meteor Fragment. It is said that 700 years ago, the invaders from beyond the sky descended upon the surface of Urillo 6 with a meteor shower. The meteor fragment is solid evidence that those invaders once tainted our land. <clears throat> Sorry, the tour guide in me gets a little carried away. I'm not here to give you a history lesson. Still, it's no exaggeration to say that if the meteor fragment isn't recovered, the museum will lose half of its significance. Not yet. That's why this case is such a conundrum for the Silvermane Guards. Truth be told, the Meteor Fragment isn't the only item that was stolen, but we want the museum to open as soon as possible. We can worry about the other missing items later. Ah, you must be thinking of Sample, right? I don't think so. Our people have been keeping a close eye on him these days. The reports say he's been on his best behavior. Not the slightest hint of troublemaking. The guard station in the underworld reported that some suspicious characters have been meeting at a hideout in the Great Mine late at night. Since the Silvermane guards are still getting situated in the underworld and we don't have any direct evidence, we haven't been able to apprehend any suspects. But, if you were to go there yourself and ask around, I think we could gather a lot of useful intel. So, would you like to help solve this case? Sounds promising. I'll meet you in the underworld then. The conditions here are so... rudimentary. I wonder how long those people have been living here. Back to the investigation. We contacted an agent from Wildfire. Apparently she has some first-hand intel. I think her name was... Sweta? Yes, that's right. Let's go pay her a visit. Uh, what? Oh, it's you! Oh, I thought I'd been discovered. Let's try not to make a commotion. You never know who's listening. That bad, huh? How many exhibit thieves are there? A lot. I don't know if you're aware, miss, but any intel that makes money spreads like wildfire in the underworld. Travel between the overworld and the underworld has been open for some time, but not everyone down here can take advantage of that opportunity. The majority of underworlders have to stay here to feed their families. From what I hear, smuggling museum artifacts is a lucrative enterprise. If I wasn't working for Wildfire, I'd be tempted to get in on the cash myself. You aren't getting any funny ideas, are you? <sighs> I'll cut to the chase. Wildfire hasn't identified the ringleader yet, but I've heard some interesting rumors that might be helpful to you. I'm all ears. Firstly, the group in question has a very public presence. They post recruitment notices all over the street. If you can find a notice, you might be able to glean some clues from it. Secondly, they're rash and careless in their work. They've been seen carrying large crates of illicit goods around the mines and selling them out in the open, without even trying to hide anything from the miners. Thirdly, I heard there are children in the mines that might be involved. I haven't had the chance to look into it, but keep an eye out. Hmm, I see. Thanks for the intel. I'm sure it'll help us crack the case. Well, I'm going to head for the settlement and see if I can get more intel from the locals. In the meantime, do you think you could head out and look for more clues? We can compare notes when you're done. I'm counting on you. My daddy made a lot of money this month. 
you bought me lots of new clothes! Things you can't even find in the underworld! <laughs> clothes schmoes! My daddy bought me a super rare present! He got me a model tram! Bet you haven't seen one of those before! That costs way much more than boring clothes! Sounds like their parents bought them expensive gifts recently. If people in the underworld want to get rich, what options do they have? This is noteworthy. Beep, beep. What are these two doing sneaking around? Beep, beep, alert, alert, nosy person spotted. Nosy person spotted. Beep, beep. Protect the goods. Protect the goods. Empty. These crates were probably used to store stolen items. Someone left robots to guard them. It looks like I'm too late. Let's look elsewhere. The three rumors Sweda talked about I'll check out. Time to meet back up with Pela. Oh good, you're back! Did you find any critical intel? I see. Looks like someone is getting the miners involved in the stealing after all. I made some progress too. The miners here said they've noticed some people acting strange recently. A few vagrants who almost never leave the Great Mine have suddenly started making trips to Boulder Town. I asked the Silvermane Guard Station there to go investigate some places of interest. I hope they find something... Hey! We've got some news! A stroke of luck. I didn't expect to get a break in the investigation so quickly. Come on, let's go to the Gerda Grand Hotel. I hope this isn't some sort of cover-up operation. This must be the box. Let's open it. Let's see. The color, the texture. Yep, this is the stolen meteor fragment, all right. Fantastic! I've done a lot of research into artifact authentication techniques. You can trust my judgment. I understand why you're suspicious, though. This whole investigation was a little too easy. In any case, now that we have the meteor fragment, the museum can now open to the public. That's good news. As for tracking down the thief, I'm afraid it'll be a long-term project. When the time comes, we may need your assistance again. Let's go. We need to take this item back to the museum where it belongs. Now the General Hall can return to its former glory. Thanks for your help. The Meteor Fragment. It's so majestic. Didn't you already say that? Ah, <sighs> forget it. It's thanks to you that we got it back in one piece. If you want to call it a rock, call it a rock. The General Hall is ready to open to the public again. Oh, by the way, the museum's previous manager resigned recently to pursue his dream of becoming a writer. So, if you're interested, do you think you'd like to take up the post part-time? I promise you it won't be a boring job. What does that mean? Well, you didn't say no, so I'll count that as a yes. Now that that's settled, let's go pay a visit to the museum lobby secretary, Eris. She's a talented worker and can tell you everything there is to know about museum matters. Allow me.
me to introduce you to. This is Eris, our secretary. And this is the savior of Bellabog from the Express. I'm sure you've heard his name many times already. Oh yes, I've heard so much about you. It's so nice to finally have the pleasure of meeting you. In addition to her secretarial duties, Eris is also a student at the Bellabog College of Art. She's very knowledgeable about the museum's exhibits and their history. Eris, starting today, he is going to be our museum manager. Please keep him updated on matters relating to the opening and operation of the exhibits. My pleasure, Miss Pela. Leave it to me. I'll keep our manager up to speed on every detail. Would you like to begin with the museum's workflows? That's the spirit. Let's get started then. Good to see you. The General Hall has been receiving a lot of visitors lately. The yearning for history and art has reawakened in the hearts of Bellabagians, thanks to your superb management. You know, I never guess you'd become a pro at this job. I only wanted you to experience the fun of working here. So I'm curious, how do you like being the museum manager? I know, right? And it really gives you a sense of accomplishment. Anyway, there's something else I wanted to talk to you about. There's been a new development in the museum theft case. First, I need to show you something. Here, this way. After the General Hall opened to the public, the Silvermane Guards and Wildfire did a follow-up investigation in the underworld. Progress was really slow, but they managed to hunt down some new clues. If the next stage of the investigation is successful, we should be able to open up the Industrial Hall to the public. And here we are. The item that's supposed to be in this exhibit is a modern sculpture called Gears and Wisdom. It's a little hard to describe. Sort of... abstract. It's made of gears and mechanical parts, and it's about the same height and weight as the average person. Basically, it's too heavy for someone to just pick up and run off with. As you can see, this sculpture was placed at the entrance hall of the Industrial Hall, because it symbolizes the industrial spirit that Bellabogians have lived, breathed, and produced for centuries. Without it, the industrial hall loses its soul. We have to retrieve the sculpture before we can open to the public. It seems we'll have to make another visit to the underworld. It took nearly 20 years from design to completion to make Gears and Wisdom, we can't let all that painstaking work and talent go to waste. We have to get it back. I received some intel just earlier today. Someone said they found clues related to a gang of thieves in the Underworld's robot settlement. I don't know if they'll lead us to the sculpture, but it's worth a try. We can head over to the robot settlement as soon as you're ready. Let's head out then. Hmm. There's quite the crowd here today. Where do we start? Huh? Ah! You mean the little girl in red? I remember her. I saw her in the overworld at Lady Branya's succession ceremony. I don't know if she can give us any leads, but it's always good to say hi to a friend. Basic courtesy, right? It's Big Brother! And Miss Pelagia Sergeyevna! You remember my full name? This kid is really something! Nice to meet you, Clara! What brings you to the robot settlement? Well... Something strange happened in the settlement recently. I'm asking the grown-ups who live nearby if they know anything about it. Something strange? Can you share any details? Well, recently, a lot of the little robots in the settlement started behaving strangely. It's like they... 
malfunction suddenly, all at the same time. They started roaming around, breaking into people's tents, destroying their belongings. It was a real headache for the people living here. Mr. Sparrow scanned the robots for irregularities, but the results all came back normal. So, I don't think it's a hardware issue. So they're malfunctioning collectively. Hmm. <sighs> ah, uh, you're right. Since we're already here... Clara, we'll help you investigate what's going on with the robots. Really? But don't you and Miss Pale have something important to do? It'll be fine. We have other people in the underworld working on the investigation, too. Besides, we don't have any clues yet, so we may as well do something useful. Ah, thanks a lot! I was worried about handling the robots on my own, but with your help, it should be easy! The duty of the Silvermane Guards is to serve the people. So where can we find these robots? Clara, can you lead the way? Of course! Just follow me! Oh, look! Over there! There's definitely something wrong with that robot! It looks normal enough on the surface. Let's take a closer look. So aggressive! Are all the robots in the settlement like this? No, it must be malfunctioning. Uh, sorry little robot, but it looks like you're sick. Uh, I'm gonna take off your shell and give you a checkup. Look! This component... doesn't seem like it belongs here. Claire, can I take a look? Oh, of course! <sighs> There's no mistaking it. This component was taken from Gears and Wisdom. I can't believe my own eyes either, but I know that sculpture inside and out. No wonder Wildfire and the Silvermane Guards were never able to find Gears and Wisdom. Keeping such a conspicuous piece of art around wouldn't go unnoticed. The thieves must have disassembled it and hidden the parts inside the robots. But the best laid plans of snow mice and men often go awry. They didn't realize the parts would interfere with the robots' systems and cause them to run amok. Now we just need to find all the malfunctioning robots and retrieve the sculpture pieces one by one. I never imagined this would help you solve the case! That's great! Let's get to work then! We're going to get all the stolen pieces back! The grown-ups said that the spot where the malfunctioning robots appeared is in... this direction! Let's go look over there, big brother! Looks like we rescued all the robots in this area too. <sighs> This is taking longer than I imagined. At this pace, it'll take us the entire day to fix all these robots. Uh, I get what you're saying, but... Alright, alright, I give up. That sculpture has dozens of individual parts. There's no way we'll recover them all at this rate. We just need enough parts to put it back together. As for the rest, I'll have replacements made. But, you have to promise to keep this a secret. You too, Clara. Don't worry, I'll keep your plan super secret, Miss Pela. Thanks, Clara. Let's get on to the next area then. Shh! Keep your voices down. It's a big one! Oh. Poor little Grizzly. There must be a lot of sculpture parts jammed inside. Uh, let's go give him a checkup. Phew. All finished. 
This robot will reboot on its own after a while. Well, let's leave him be. Miss Pela, here's all the sculpture pieces I found. Good work, Clara. Let's see here. We still don't have anywhere near enough. Do we have any other choice? I am starting to feel a little worn out, though. I know! How about we go talk to Mr. Svara? Uh, he might not be able to round up the robots, but I'm sure he'll have some good ideas. Um... I've never met Svalrog before. I heard he's not easy to get along with. <laughs> Don't worry. Mr. Sparrow has warmed up to guests a lot more now. I'll explain the whole situation to him. Here, this way. Clara, you have returned. And you have brought with you the Outsider and... Querying database. Silvermane Guard Intelligence Officer Pelagaya Sergeyevna. It is a pleasure to meet you. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Svarog. Hey! Pixis Clara's back! <gasps> Pixis Clara? Hello! What brings you two here today? These two young humans found a suspicious batch of components. They wish to deliver them to me to earn my appreciation. However, the origin of these components is unknown, and they have no practical utility. It is difficult to ascertain their value. Suspicious components? Can we have a look at them? As you wish. Sure enough. These parts are from the museum's sculpture. These kids found way more than we did fixing all those robots. What an embarrassment. Me and my sister were playing outside. We heard some grown-ups talking about what they were going to do with the parts. It seemed suspicious. They were acting a little sneaky. We hid in the shadows and waited until we heard them snoring. And then, and then, we quietly dragged away the boxes with the parts in, and, and gave them to Mr. Svarog. That was really risky behavior. If those grown-ups had woken up, things could have gotten really dangerous for you two. We were just trying to help. Oh, what? Uh, don't cry. Uh, listen, these parts don't belong to Mr. Svarog, but you two were still a big help to us. I am unable to determine the logic behind this series of events, but if you insist... Excellent job, little girl. See? I told you Mr. Svarog had warmed up to gas. Really? So, we were a big help, weren't we? Awesome! With these parts, we should have enough to put the sculpture back together. More or less. This isn't good. If what those kids said is true, then the museum thieves have operatives working in the settlement. I'll get in touch with the wildfire and the Silvermane guards right away, and have them investigate the matter thoroughly. But for now, let's take the parts we have back to the museum, or we'll be here all night. <sighs> if I'd known how much work this was going to be, I would have enlisted more help. But see the final product for yourself. Not too shabby, is it? You want to know what happens to people who vandalize exhibits? I call the Silvermane Guards, and they carry you away. Take a look. As long as you don't pull out the blueprints and spend dozens of hours comparing, this version is virtually indistinguishable from the original. Excellent work! 
With Gears of Wisdom back, the Industrial Hall can reopen to the public. If you're still interested in managing the museum, why don't you go talk to Miss Eris about opening up the Industrial Hall? In the meantime, I'll follow up on the exhibit theft case. I wonder if any new clues were found over in Svalrog's domain. I'll let you know if we get any new leads. I have a hunch that we're close to uncovering the culprit behind the curtain. Ah, good to see you again. I've heard from Miss Eris that under your superb management, the museum is on the verge of regaining the thriving crowds of its heyday. If the momentum continues, and if the History Culture Hall can reopen on schedule, the museum's complete revival is surely just around the corner. <laughs> yes, indeed. I'm afraid there's been another theft. Like the previous cases, a valuable item was stolen from our exhibit, this time in the History Culture Hall. The item in question has a connection to you. No. As you just pointed out, that kind of thing is easily replaced. It'll be easier to explain once we're actually in the History Culture Hall. Why don't I take you there now? With an exhibit like this, all Bellabakians will know your story. You can probably guess from the name that the History Culture Hall houses artifacts, replicas, and documents that are of great historical significance to Bellabog. Every passing day, we Bellabogians must continue to endure the city's harsh environment. The trials and experiences of our ancestors serve as a reminder that the path of survival belongs to every generation of our people. Every child in Bellabog should visit this exhibit at least once. <sighs> no, once isn't nearly enough. This is the item in question. This projector is a limited edition version, custom made for the museum. The only one of its kind in the whole of Bellabog. It can produce images with a resolution up to... Oh, sorry. I'm doing my tour guide thing again. I'm sure someone as well-traveled as yourself has seen much fancier equipment than this. Oh, uh, that's not the issue. The issue isn't the projector, but the microfilm that goes into it. It's the most crucial piece of this exhibit, and it was stolen. There were some very valuable images on that film, and we hadn't gotten around to making a backup. I must admit, the thieves chose a good target, and they were fast and efficient. Slide projection is a new addition to the museum. It was intended to be a surprise for visitors when the History Culture Hall reopened, if we don't recover the microfilm, the hall's opening will have to be postponed indefinitely. Some of the images stored on that film are related to you, Miss March 7th, and Master Don Hong. The curators of the museum wanted to take this opportunity to tell the story of the Astral Express's visit to Bellabog. Uh, th that's beside the point. Uh, is... Is that your phone? Was that a message from Lady Branya? Hmm. This theft case has been dragging on for too long. She must have decided to intervene. If she can delegate more resources to the investigation, that should help it move forward faster. No point in waiting around here then. 
Let's go pay Lady Branya a visit. Welcome. If I'm not mistaken, the two of you just rushed over here from the History and Culture Museum? I appreciate your coming here on such short notice. I should have gotten involved earlier, but I was tied up with other responsibilities. My apologies for letting you take on the investigation without proper support. Lady Branya, we never saw it like that. <laughs> There's no one else here, Pela. No need for such formality. <laughs> okay, Miss Branya. <laughs> I heard that you helped recover a number of valuable items for the museum, and that you've been running the museum as a part-time manager? Do you have any insights into this serial theft case? Is that so? I see. In any case, this fiasco has been going on right under our noses for too long. Regardless of how cunning and talented the culprit may be, we must draw them out and demonstrate the resolve of the architects. I will issue an immediate directive to mobilize all on-duty Silverman guards in the city to conduct a door-to-door -door investigation. You're familiar with many of the locals in the administrative district, right? If possible, I'd like you to head to the city center and see if they have any clues to offer us. Understood. We'll head there at once, Miss Branya. <sighs> Guess you're stuck with me again for this assignment. Let's meet up at Fountain Plaza. This place is an endless stream of people. Where do we start? Agreed. That'll be more efficient. I remember lots of folks like to relax around the plaza. Let's head there first. Children of the Everwinter City, proud citizens of the preservation, hold your heads up high. Grind not against the mundane vulgarities of your everyday lives. Always remember, deep in your hearts, the teachings of the Architects and the Supreme Guardian. Oh, if it isn't the savior of Bellabog, the Guardian's honored guest, child of the galaxy and stars. Welcome back to our eternally snow-covered, yet forever beautiful winter metropolis. Um, can you please answer the question we just asked? I haven't heard of any stolen artifacts. These days, I'm too busy praising the grace of the preservation to be distracted by worldly matters. However, if your hearts are troubled by this affair, then I hope that Klepoth will bestow their blessings upon you both, and that you may soon find the evildoer who committed such a crime. Uh, thanks for your well wishes. Let's move on. Ready to sign the petition? Have any other questions? Ah, you mean the items that have been disappearing mysteriously from the History and Culture Museum? I heard tell. I wonder if they got their hands on the original manuscripts of Tale of the Winterlands. Absolutely not! Don't worry, ma'am. I will protect those manuscripts with my life. Oh, wow! That's a relief to hear. I didn't realize you were so passionate. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry about that. Uh, back to the topic at hand. Do you have any clues that could be linked to the theft of the museum's artifacts? Have you noticed anything unusual lately? Well, let me think. The editorial department has been recruiting recently. The new editor intern was scolded by the editor-in-chief a few times. And then... Uh, sorry. These are all everyday occurrences. I really don't know of any noteworthy clues. 
Maybe you could try asking the other people around here? I see. Sorry for taking up your time. Let's move along then. I remember you. Do you have any questions after reading the Scam Prevention Guide? Perhaps you've decided to join the Dark Blue Scam Victims Association. How could I not? Precious items from the History and Culture Museum have been stolen one after another, and the culprit remains at large, despite the Silvermane Guards' noblest efforts to track them down. Ugh, I'll tell you the truth. I've been preparing to publicly accuse the person responsible for this whole thing for two days now. Huh? Oh wait, so you have incriminating evidence against the culprit? <sighs> evidence? Who needs evidence? Let me tell you, there is only one person in all of Bellabog who could do such a thing! That shameless blue-haired fraudster! Oh... You guys are here to investigate the case? Perfect! I'll give you a list of the culprit's scams, too. Sorry, sir. Today we're only here to investigate the museum thefts. And we can't close the case without evidence. If you come across any reliable clues, Please report them to an on-duty Silvermane guard. Let's get going. <sighs> Another half-day gone. And nothing to show for it. Ugh. The culprit is still hiding in the shadows. Can't we find even one lead? Ah, if it isn't Bella Bog's most adorable public servant, and the magnificent outsider, good day to you. You know us? Young lady, I have seen you on many occasions near the Everwinter Monument teaching children the history of Bella Bog. <laughs> I am truly in awe of your knowledge and patience. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the compliment, I guess. May I ask, with whom do we have the pleasure of speaking? I am Wallace Cambridge Limestein, the 25th head of the Limestein family. I am honored to make your acquaintance. And yes, I am familiar with this outsider next to you. He often walks right past me without so much as a greeting. <laughs> How could you say such a thing? I just want everyone to have a proper understanding of basic manners. All right, all right, we got it. Mr. Limestein, is there something you want to discuss with us? As a matter of fact, I do. I noticed you two had been wandering around Executive Plaza for some time now, stopping to ask questions at every turn, so I surmised you were investigating something important. As it so happens, I witnessed a strange incident recently that left me quite puzzled. And after reflecting on it for a time, I decided it would be most appropriate to inform public officials. This incident... is it related to the museum thefts? I can't say for sure that it's directly related, but a friend of mine I no longer hear from used to frequent the museum and often talked about its exhibits with a group of us tea lovers. So by no longer hear from, you mean you've been unable to get in touch with this friend of yours? Precisely. His name is Norbert. We used to chat during lunch breaks in the lobby of the Goethe Hotel, along with a few other high-class individuals, of course. And one day, Norbert suddenly stopped showing up to our tea parties. It was as though he disappeared into thin air. I still remember the last thing he said to me. Limestein, listen to me. One must be ambitious in life. I'm gonna do something big for once. Be ambitious in life? Do something big for once? Coming from the mouth of a wealthy gentleman, that sounded rather curious to me. This Norbert guy, do you know what his line of work was? I'm not entirely sure. I never asked. Oh. 
quite a preposterous statement. You wouldn't understand. Friendship between gentlemen is as pure as water. We are all dignified people. Why bother with such trivial matters? Ugh. In the eyes of most people, there's a world of difference between trivial matters and a career. I have recorded all the clues you provided, Mr. Leinstein. Thank you for putting your trust in the Silvermane Guards. We will keep you informed if there are any developments in the investigation. No, no, I should be thanking you, young lady of the guards. Well then, if that's all, I shall take my leave. I wonder if this friend of Mr. Wallace has anything to do with the museum thefts. That's enough detective work for today. Questioning more people would just be a waste of energy. Let's go report back to Lady Branya. Miss Branya, we're back. Thank you both for your hard work. Did you find out anything in the administrative district? We didn't find anything directly related to the museum thefts, but there was one thing worth noting. I see. It was the man from the Limestein family who provided the information. Norbert. Norbert. I feel like I've heard that name somewhere before. Please give me a moment to see if I can recall. Huh. I remember now. The Minister of Transportation, Noel, has a nephew named Norbert. I believe he's currently working in the Municipal Department as a Transportation Coordinator. Norbert's position is indeed an idle one. It's no wonder he has time to socialize with members of the Limestein family. If what Wallace said is right, then Norbert must have been missing for several days already. There must be someone who knows where he is. Even if they want to keep the young man secret, they'll cough it up with the right kind of encouragement. Kyle, can I ask you a favor? I would like you to visit the residence of Mr. Noel and ask around regarding the whereabouts of Mr. Norbert. Understood, Madam Guardian. Lady Branya, Miss Pela, I have returned. You were quite expedient, Kyle. Did you find anything out from the Department of Transportation? It took a little prodding, but a few of the more timid attendants started speaking up. They say that Mr. Norbert was indeed leaving at odd hours recently. Whenever someone would ask where he was headed, he'd mumble something about going to the shopping street to inspect the site. The attendants think he might have a love interest, someone he doesn't want his family to know about. They haven't mentioned anything to the Minister of Transportation. Going out at unusual hours, the shopping street, could it be? I have a request. I'd like the two of you to scout out Backwater Pass and see whether anything is happening there. While the two of you were busy questioning people in the city, I received some tip-offs. One source said that suspicious people were recently seen sneaking around the Fragmentum Corrosion Zone, and that the Silvermane Guards didn't prevent them from entering. Together with Norbert's mumblings about a shopping street, I think all these clues are pointing in one direction. So this Mr. Norbert could well be the museum thief we're looking for? We can't hold off a moment longer! Hurry! Let's go arrest that scoundrel! My apologies, I have a lot of business to attend to at present. I won't be joining you. Good luck recovering the stolen items. Uh, something doesn't feel right. It's obviously an abandoned shopping street, but it also feels like people were here not too long ago. We must be cautious. Whether the culprit is Norbert or someone else, he certainly has no shortage of helpers. Shh! There are people talking inside. Let's see if we can hear them. But, but sir, 
Pretending to be a Silvermane guard is a serious crime. Stop acting like a wimp. You think you can make a fortune with that kind of attitude? Don't overthink things. Just play your part. Today's password is roast the sausage, not the bread. You got that? Got it, sir. Roast the sausage, not the bread. Don't let anything in that doesn't know the password. Not even a fly. You got that? Don't worry, Mr. Norbert. I understand. So it is Norbert after all. And he's making his accomplice impersonate a Silvermane guard. The audacity. We found the culprit. Now we just have to catch him red-handed. Hey, you two! Don't move! Must be the accomplice. Let's think fast! Say the password, or get out of here! This isn't any old shopping street, you know. Huh? I... I yes, that's correct. <laughs> so, um, you're gonna let us in now? We need to talk to Mr. Norbert about some... Important business-related matters. Wait, did you just say, Mr. Norbert? Who are you guys? This whole operation, the boss hasn't shown his face once. How could a couple of outsiders just walk in knowing his name? Looks like our cover's blown. Guess we'll have to do this the hard way. We'll probably end up running into more of Norbert's goons up ahead. We should proceed with caution. Look, it's Norbert again. Let's see what he's talking about this time. And the film? Is it packed and ready to go? Right here, boss. The buyer's arriving soon. Here, this way. Very good, very good. Well done. Patience. Soon we will all be rich. Film, did you hear that? That film he mentioned must be the same one that was stolen from the museum. Why would someone from such a wealthy family do something like this for money? It's unbelievable! We have to find a way to stop this before they sell the film. Wait, don't make a move yet! We should take some pictures as evidence in case the culprit denies the charges. Your equipment probably has better specs than mine. I'll leave the picture taking to you. You two! What's going on here, Norbert? Didn't you say your security was impenetrable? Minions! I, I mean, Silvermane guards! Get rid of these intruders immediately! You've got a lot of nerve drawing your weapons in front of an intelligence officer of the Silvermane guards! Come on! Let's give these imposters a taste of justice! There's no point in resisting, Mr. Norbert. Your accomplices have been subdued. There's nowhere to run. You had the audacity to tell your men to disguise themselves as Silvermane guards. Now I'll be interested to see what kind of sentence the adjudication panel gives you. I... Uh, you... Oh, th this isn't right. You have no evidence of wrongdoing. We're just here to... Still in denial? Your secret dealings have been photographed. We have all the evidence we need. Is there anything else you want to say? I... Oh... I... I knew I couldn't trust you hooligans. Even the simplest of sales was too much for you to handle. Silverman Guard Lady, I surrender. Take the microfilm back to the museum. I'm sorry. I only ask one thing.
Please don't hand me over to my uncle. With Klepoth as my witness, uncle would be so angry he'd turn me into a leather jacket! Hm. That's not up to me. It was a difficult journey, but it had a happy ending. Not only did we manage to recover the microfilm, but we also caught the culprit behind the museum thefts. And that's something worth celebrating. However, I'm still a little confused. Mr. Norbert is wealthy and opportunistic, but how did he manage to find so many accomplices and organize such a large-scale smuggling operation? These questions can wait until the interrogation. As for you and me, our work ends here. Thanks for your efforts. Come on, let's take the microfilm back to the museum. It works! The slides play without a hitch! The microfilm is undamaged! Once the projector is restored, the History Culture Hall can reopen to the public. Then visitors can enjoy all three of the museum's most important exhibits. I want to thank you again, on behalf of all the museum staff and all of the citizens of Bellabog. If it weren't for your help, I'm afraid many of the exhibits in this museum would have been lost. I'm just stating the obvious. The way I see it, the museum's reopening is a very significant event and worth remembering more than any other time in the past. A whole generation has grown up in the underworld in the last decade or so, and they never had the privilege of seeing these precious works of art and historical treasures. What you've done has helped bridge a huge gap for them. So, even if it seems small to you, you did a very great thing here. <clears throat> That's enough praise for now. Anyway, if you did want to continue working as a part-time manager and handle the daily operations of the History Culture Hall, I recommend talking to Miss Eris. It's not like we don't have any other suitable candidates for the position. Isn't it great you can help us with such an enjoyable job? Ah, and by the way, I'll keep you informed if we pry anything noteworthy out of that Mr. Norbert guy. See you later. Oh, so you are. And these would be... Miss March 7th and Mr. Yang, I presume. <laughs> That's right! I'm the first one! He's the second! We're here to help! March, try not to sound too excited. We're here for work, remember? Oh, you're the one getting excited! Oh, my first detective case! Finally, my intelligence and wisdom have a chance to shine! Miss March, Mr. Yang, I've been looking forward to meeting you. Make yourselves comfortable. It, one moment, please. Jing Yan! Give me the photos! <sighs> coming, coming! Stop yelling! <sighs> Thanks for waiting. These are the Outworld, uh, travelers who were sighted in the location specified by the General and the Master Diviner. This was two days before the Ambrosial Arbor came back to life. We'd like you to take a look. Do you recognize any of them as a threat? Let me take a look. Hmm, so these are the suspects. Uh-huh. Hmm, I see. What's wrong, Mr. Yang? See anything fishy? Who's he? I'd like to see more information on him. Which one? L let me see. I don't have any concrete evidence, but I think he's worth checking out. Oh, him? I remember him. He's a traveling merchant. He trades throughout the universe. Knows a thing or two about remedial arts, too. He registered himself on the Xianzhou as... Uh, what was it again? 
Locha. His name is Locha. That's right, Locha. He came to the Sienjo with a huge box this time. Some sort of funerary contraption. It had a funny name. Something to do with coughing? It was pretty conspicuous. I had to ask him about it. A coffin. It's a tool that certain non-Shenzhou travelers seem to use in death rites. I'm guessing our guests here might recognize it. Huh. <laughs> I swear he said coughing. Anyway, we checked him out. His record on the Sienjo was squeaky clean. As for this caffeine thing... Coffin. Yeah, yeah. Either way, it definitely had something to do with funerals. There are lots of travelers on the Lawfill, each with their own star system and death rites. I guess that must be Loch's line of work. Is there something up with him? Not necessarily, but I have my reasons for wanting to investigate. What was he doing in the days leading up to the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection? Hmm. That's complicated. Come with me to the Foursquare Mirror. It'll be easier to explain. Exalting Sanctum is one of the Lafu's crucial central cities. The higher-ups are very concerned about security issues here. That's why there are so many Psychranes stationed in the area. Locha arrived on the Lafu a few days prior to the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. Up until the day before the resurrection, there was nothing suspicious about his behavior. Ugh, I figured it out! The day before the resurrection, he appeared near the Ambrosial Arbor with a Stellaron! Oh yeah, I guess. You're pretty smart. Sometimes. <laughs> You lot are enthusiastic, I'll give you that. The reason I mentioned the day before the resurrection is because... we have no idea what he did that day. The resurrection brought about unusual yin-yang phenomena that caused the entire Psycrane system to malfunction. The image data from the day of the incident is beyond restoration, and the data from that day before was badly affected. We will. In due course. But we can't be too general. Specific questions are key. Not to mention, without a clear suspicion, it would involve multiple interrogations. So, if you feel this Lacha is suspicious in some way, make it known. Then I can arrange for his detention and interrogation. How should I put this? He just looks kind of... Mr. Yang, you were going off of his appearance this whole time? I thought you had some super secret thing up your sleeve. Uh, didn't your mom ever tell you not to judge a book by its... Sorry, what I mean is... Hmm, it's difficult to explain, but my instinct tells me this Law Cha is involved somehow. Apologies, uh, I realize this is personal speculation. That's all right. Instinct is an important part of any Realm Keeping Commission investigation. There are times when my gut tells me something's not right, and there's usually a reason for it. I'm with you on this one. Be that as it may, as an official, I can't go bringing someone in based on a villainous appearance. Because if a complaint led to his dismissal, it would leave a blemish on his resume, making it difficult for him to advance his career for the next few centuries. Precise- no! What are you talking about? <sighs> anyway, if you want to investigate, I can grant you access to the Foursquare Mirror. Jing Yan, you'll be assisting our esteemed guests in their investigation. Isn't it inappropriate for an officer of the Realm Keeping Commission to assist the public in investigating someone? Ah, not at all. Make sure you don't leave the Commission. Just help them check the Psychrane footage. Keep me updated on progress. If you find hard evidence, I'll be there in a flash. One thing, though. Don't approach him. If you make a discovery, contact me first. We're thankful that you're entrusting this to us. We'll keep it by the book. 
Don't worry. The Express Crew keeps its promises. We won't disappoint you. <sighs> Jing Yen, over to you. I need to get going. Understood. This might take you some time. Come and find me when you're ready. I can bring up the data any time from here. Are you ready? All right, follow me. As official Da Hao mentioned, the arbor caused unusual yin-yang phenomena, which affected the entire Psycrane system. We lost a lot of video footage, and for the image data we recovered, the timestamps are all jumbled up. Look, this is Mr. Locha on the day prior to the resurrection. <sighs> so we have to clean up and reorder the footage ourselves? Exactly. Thank you again for your help. Uh, this is your forte. Over to you! Family matters are always tricky. That's right. And you're the sidekick. What do you think? Any idea what the correct order is? Uh, let me see if this order works. Hmm. Wucha exits the star skiff, enters Exalting Sanctum, goes into an inn, and puts down his luggage, including the coffin. Then he goes to Spare Time Bookshop, but doesn't buy anything. Finally, he leaves and turns a corner into a dark alley. The logic in this is sound. Looks like the correct order. Matters nice work. Tricky. Ah, nice work indeed. Your sidekick to a genius detective after all. Where does this corner lead to? I checked the map and found a gate in this open area. Look, there's a small dock on the other side. He may have left on a star skiff. Why would he leave Exalting Sanctum via a secluded dock? That's so suspicious. I don't think Mr. Locha could have departed from there. The dock you're referring to is Yun Shou Crag 999. It belongs to the Seat of Divine Foresight. It's only used during invasions. That's why that gate is almost always locked. As far as I know, it's been locked for centuries, and only gets opened for occasional inspections. The key question is, when did he leave? There's only one gate in this area, at least on the map. Miss Jingyan, does the remaining footage show anyone else entering or leaving this place? I can find out, but you'll have to wait a while. Most of the footage was lost, but at least there was a whole day of recording. There's a lot that needs checking and confirming first. Understood. Thank you. Thanks so much! We'll be waiting! Patiently! Your assistance in this matter is what requires gratitude. I'll get you what you need as soon as possible. Thanks for waiting. I checked all of the footage we have of the open area. I say all. A lot of it was lost. Are the corrupted parts recoverable? Can we use the same methods again? For some of them, maybe. But I can't guarantee anything. I'll do my best, of course. It'll take more time. I can't hand them over just now. Thank you. Did you find anything in the remaining footage worth paying attention to? Hmm... Only that someone left the area through that exit around two hours after Locha's appearance here. Lorch has nowhere to be seen, though. Uh-huh. Isn't this a scene from the Angler Mystery? 
Uh, the angler mystery! The novel! There's a scene that's identical to this footage! Now that you mention it... Uh, I'm not sure I follow. Uh, the angler's origin story, of course! He's a healer from the Alchemy Commission who gets on the wrong side of a mysterious organization called the Tea Society. Two agents in dark clothing wait for him to be alone and then poison him. The drug has the same de-aging effect as the Vidyatara's hatching rebirth. The angler gets younger and turns back into a child. From there on out, the angler pursues the Tea Society while solving all kinds of strange cases. It wouldn't. In the book, the drug only de-ages the body. It can't repair damage to the soul. In other words, it's like molting. Not a true rebirth. Hatching rebirths are specific to the Vidyadara. Can humans also experience de-aging? Uh, it's just a novel. Who knows if something like that could happen in reality? I thought of it as soon as I saw this footage, though. Su Fang, the author, was a medical assistant in the Alchemy Commission. The medical principles of the novel are strictly grounded in reality. True. If someone from the Alchemy Commission was suggesting it could be done, then there's always a possibility. So, March, what you mean is, the two people in dark clothing are Tea Society agents, and the child is... a de-aged Lawcha? What if a crazy angler mystery fan decided to commit a copycat crime? Luo Cha gets turned into a child, then follows a mysterious duo in black. Oh, the plot thickens. This could be a kidnapping. <sighs> the child in the footage has black hair. Luo Cha's hair is blonde. Ah, uh, yeah, makes sense to me. Hold your horses, everyone. I recognize this child now. That's Yinshu, the young shopkeeper at Spare Time Bookshop. Too bad, March. No de-aging, no angler. Uh, no, no, this is completely different. The Psycranes weren't able to get a clear look at the two people in dark clothing. Let's ask Yinshu. Maybe she saw something. I'll keep trying to recover the lost footage. I'll contact you if there's a breakthrough. All right, let's go! Time to interview the witness! I don't see the shopkeeper. Uh, let's look for her in the area. Business hours aren't over yet. She should be nearby. You two go ahead. I'll wait here in case she comes back. Okay, let's go. Uh, hey, mister! Are you manning the counter for the young shopkeeper of Spare Time Bookshop? Huh? <laughs> young shopkeeper? You mean Ying Shu? <laughs> yeah, I am. Something wrong? Um, can you please tell us where she is? <laughs> Why should I? Uh, because we're asking nicely? What's with the attitude? <laughs> I can tell you. If you pay me 500 strands. <laughs> pay you? <laughs> what is this? You want paying for a simple favor? <laughs> Come on. No one ever tell you that information and intelligence are the most valuable commodities? Uh, this guy doesn't seem like the negotiable type. What should we do? Oh, you dare threaten me. <laughs> do you know who I am? The question is, do you know who we are? <laughs> the Express Crew. Never heard of you. I mean, they couldn't be higher-ups from one of the other Sienchou ships, could they? Dang it! Am I in trouble? Ugh, better to live and find another day. Ugh, forget it. I'm not stooping to your level. Inchu said she had a voucher for a food stall over an exalting sanctum. She wanted to use it before it expired. 
You know, she's not been gone long. Probably finishing up her food right now. Hmm. About time you saw the light. Come on, let's go. Are you Yinshu? The shopkeeper at Spare Time Bookshop? There's something we want to talk to you about. Yeah, that's me. Can I help you? You're heading back to the store, right? Let's walk and talk. I'll tell you all about it on the way. Oh, uh, okay. Let's go. That footage... I remember that day. After I closed up the store, I walked around for a while. I was looking for a place to read. I found that empty area. It seems like a good reading spot at first, but then I noticed two people dressed in dark clothing and a blonde outworlder hanging around. Something didn't feel right. So I left. Those two people left the same way I did. So you just happened to be going the same way. Did you see what the outworlder was doing? Mm, sorry. I was only trying to find a place to read. I didn't pay much attention to him. Or the two in dark clothing. All I remember is the two people in dark clothing... Uh, they smell pretty bad. I guess that's not much of a clue. Sorry I can't give you any useful information. On the contrary, any information you can give is valuable. Thank you very much. Still, according to the Psycrane recordings, Rocha's final stop before heading towards the open area was your store. My store? Spare time bookshop? You're sure he came to... Oh, that's right. I remember now he did pay a visit. Oh, how could I forget? He came in, looked at a few titles, and then handed one to me. An old paperback. Everything seemed normal, but after paying for it, he immediately tore off the title page. I was shocked, but he was grinning ear to ear, so I didn't dare ask him about it. After that, he just left the book on the counter and went on his way. I can't believe I'd forget something like that. I guess the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection the day after pushed everything else to the back of my mind. So, what was the book? The Angler Mystery. I was wondering what to do about it. I can't sell a book without a title page. But uh, since you asked about it, here, you can have it. Uh, Mr. Yang's instinct was right all along. Locha is a villain. How could he do this? Tearing up a book as well written as the Angler Mystery. Yeah, unacceptable. If I knew the answer to that, wouldn't that make me as evil as him? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're forgetting that the Realm Keeping Commission was initially investigating whether someone brought a dangerous object onto the Law Fu. The How and the others are probably not aware of what that dangerous object might be, but we know for a fact that it's the Stellaron. I think that by removing the page, Law Cha may have provided us with a key piece of the puzzle. I don't understand. What does tearing out a page have to do with the Stellaron? Are you following Mr. Yang? Wait. Exactly. I think Law Cha may have friends on the Law Fu, and they're using the title page to communicate. Uh, that makes him even worse! How dare he use a book that praises justice for his evil plans! I'm afraid evil plans are still within the realm of speculation at this stage. We have no way of knowing exactly what he did because the Psycrane data was lost. So, is this a dead end? Like it? 
new clues always turn up in the nick of time! So, we now know what time Lorcha left the open area. Nice! You found footage of him leaving? Yes. According to the Psycrane recordings, he left the area two hours after he entered. Uh, strange. Why spend two hours in such a confined area? He must have been up to something. Uh, maybe he spent all his money on Star Taro bubble tea and couldn't afford a hotel room. Oddly specific, March. Uh, it's a shame no side cranes are installed in that area. We still have no idea what he was up to. This Lucha is getting more suspicious by the minute. Psst. I know Mr. Yang never wears his heart on his sleeve, but do you get the feeling he's a little... restless? <laughs> Don't worry about me. It's just... My mind keeps wandering back to those other law chas I mentioned. Not the greatest memories. Uh, how does he always hear us? Well, I'm afraid I have some other business to attend to. Let me know if you need anything. You know how to reach me. Uh, thanks for the help, Miss Chingyan. So, what did law cha get up to during those missing two hours? I think it's high time Detective March took the gloves off. Oh? And what do you have in mind, Detective? Fieldwork? That won't be necessary, Mr. Yang. As the angler once said, a true detective operates as effectively from their armchair as from the scene of the crime. It's too early to start field work. We must wait until my deduction is complete. Then when we arrive at the scene, you'll see that the facts match my theory to a T. <laughs> well, uh, seeing as you're so confident, let's give your idea a try. Uh, yay! <laughs> Mr. Yang is the best! Ready? I'm gonna start my reconstruction. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Explaining a theory in front of everyone is more nerve-wracking than I expected. All right, I'll be using the angler's deductive method. Reconstruct what happened from the bad guy's perspective. And now I'm Lucha. Uh, quit messing around, I'm thinking. Oh, almost forgot about that title page. He took it with him, so it must have had some significance. Uh, next up, I need to have a look at that map, Mr. Yang. Hmm, he must have gone through that gate up ahead. No way he would have stayed put in such a small area for two hours. But Miss Jingyan mentioned that gate is a military asset. It's locked all year round. Uh, you think that would stop the likes of Luocha? What kind of Stellaron smuggler would he be if he couldn't get past a door? <laughs> you think a lock like this can stop a girl like me? Uh, fine, I'll be me. You guys will have to imagine his lines instead. Such a rudimentary lock. Easy pickings. Even if Lacha was able to unlock the door, what was his goal? His villain friends must have been waiting on the other side to buy the Stellaron! He went to meet them! Hold on. This would have been too quick a route. And? What's wrong with a quick route? Hmm? Ahem! What's wrong with a quick route, Mr. Yang? We're trying to uncover what Law Cha did during those two hours. But even if he repeated this route 20 times, it wouldn't have taken him that long. Ah, <sighs> true. He must have had a tougher journey than I imagined. Oh, come on, let's start over. <laughs> mm, 
you look like a tasty morsel. Those who dare to enter here must face a delicious fate. Ha! Your eyes are bigger than your stomach, foul villain! Have at you! Why is the monster talking now? Uh, you know, just a little dramatic effect! What are all these enemies doing on the Lawfu? It's because... Uh, because... 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 March, you don't have to add in combat scenes while you're figuring out where to take the story. We can wait. Monster layers in black market spaces... Uh, I doubt the Lawfu has any of that. At least I doubt things of that nature existed before the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. Uh, is it really so far-fetched? We're already assuming that Luocha came here to sell the Stellaron to a bunch of cutthroats. May as well throw in some monsters here and there. The Angler is both a detective and a fighter. Anyway, it's not like we're gonna be able to conjure up exactly what Luocha ran into. Why not use our own interpretation to bridge the gap? Hmm... I suppose that makes some kind of sense. I, uh... I try to go with the flow. I didn't expect this place to be so treacherous. I'll need to be on my guard going forward. I wonder, just who is the buyer interested in the Stellaron? The buyer is waiting there. Time to head over. Plausible. Looking at the map, this place is well hidden. Ugh, they wouldn't have met up at the dock. It's too open. <sighs> no good for discussing evil plans. Stop right there. State your business. Uh, no, that's Puar, the Tea Society's gatekeeper. Isn't Puar a type of tea? That's right! He's a member of the Tea Society, so naturally he chose a type of tea as his alias. Hey, I'm talking to you. What's your business here? Can you tell him to be less aggressive? Oh, sure. Excuse me, sir. May I ask whether you're here on business, or...? Never mind. I have a delivery for your boss. I need to give it to him in person. If you could let him know I'm here. Delivery? Ah, yes, the delivery. The boss is waiting for you. I'm afraid I'll need to see some ID first. I wonder if Luocha has something prepared for this moment. I said I need to see your boss. If you're not willing to cooperate, then perhaps some physical persuasion might be in order. Luocha's personality changes by the minute. Threats will get you nowhere. I have principles, and I don't give in to bullies. Uh, hey, this is Puar, not Mr. Yang. Enough talk. Have at you. Hang fire, Marge. I don't think Law Chow was here to beat people up. He wanted to make a deal, right? Ah, uh, true. Looks like using force isn't the right way. called Proof by Exhaustion. It's what the angler does best. That's the code. So you're the one. Wait here a moment. I'll call the boss right away. Take your time. Poir takes the page and goes to find the boss. Before long, Luocha sees an imposing figure walking towards him. Boss, this is the one. 
He brought the delivery. I'll be the judge of that. I couldn't think of anyone else to be Mr. Yang's boss. This is our boss, Startaro Bubble. Let's see this delivery and make it snappy. So what? This is the Tea Society, remember? Not before I see the money. I'm sure you understand the rules of such a transaction. Save it. Show us the goods first. Easy now. The item in question is extremely dangerous. It's understandable that our friend here wants to take extra precautions. I'm not sure Pom Pom is the best casting choice for a gang boss. Uh, it it kind of works, right? Puar, give him the money. Happy now? Ready to hand it over? Be careful. Dangerous is an understatement with this item. I'll take my leave. Yes, you will. Permanently. Puar, get rid of him. Oh, this was all going so swimmingly. Selling a dangerous item to me makes you my accomplice. And I've got too many of those. To keep our little secrets safe, I'm afraid I need to take special measures. When it comes to minor details, March can be very logical. As for the rest of the story... Speaking of which, when did I turn into an Arumaton? <sighs> That's Puar's little secret! He transforms into an Arumaton in dire situations! I... Okay. Huh. And there I was, thinking you gangsters still had some decorum. Darn it! This isn't over! Fights like these don't go unnoticed in Exalting Sanctum. Cloud Knights could show up at any minute. Better get going. And so Locha has to make a break for it. But where to? Let me have a look at the map. Aha! Gotcha! Halt! Who goes there? Uh-oh. His only escape is... Time aboard, Locha! Time to get out of here! So Locha hopped on a star skip and fled with the help of his accomplice. And that, ladies and gents, is the truth behind Luo Cha's disappearance. So, who was piloting the star skiff? I'm not sure either. The pilot didn't show themselves, so let's just assume it was him. <laughs> too many faces, too small a budget. Maybe next time. March, as much as I enjoyed your deduction, I do have a few questions. For example, if Law Cha took flight from the dock, how could he appear in Psycrane footage two hours later? Also, the dock is a military installation. The Cloud Knights would be on the scene at the slightest disturbance. How did so many monsters show up without warning? Last but not least, even if Law Cha did encounter all of the troubles you described, it wouldn't have taken him two hours to escape. Oh, you're right, Mr. Yang. I guess I can't compete with the angler just yet. You know what? Time for some field work. Maybe the answers to our questions are waiting for us at the scene. That might be the best approach. Let's go. Excuse me, officer. We're looking for someone. Can you help us? <sighs> he's got blonde hair, and judging by the way he's dressed, I'd say he was an outworlder. An outworlder with blonde hair? Could it be? May I ask why you're looking for him? He saved our life. 
Since when did we start sharing a life? Back in. We're not rehearsing. Excuse me, gentlemen. Would this blonde-haired, life-saving outworlder bear any resemblance to our suspect here? Oh, that's him! Mr. Locha, he rescued both of us. Can I ask when this rescue occurred? It was the day before the Ambrosial Arbor came back to life. We were planning to thank him properly, but in the aftermath of the Arbor incident, we never had the time. Are you two... the people in dark clothing? What's with the wardrobe change? Dark clothing? Oh, I know what you're talking about. What a pair of clowns we are. Dark clothing. <laughs> we... fell into a ditch. Wait, what? There we were, looking for a spot to practice our new routine. We found a place, eventually. A little dilapidated, but nice and quiet. <sighs> Shame about the giant ditch. <sighs> I lost my footing and slipped right in. My associate here, Forth, yelled after me, Don't panic! Forth's got your back! Two seconds later, he landed on my back. Unfortunately, the ditch was connected to a sewer outlet. We were covered head to toe in... Anyway... I assume that's why you thought we had dark clothing on. A dignified story, I'm sure you'll agree. Ugh, no wonder Yin Shu said she had to cover her nose. Anyway... Thankfully, Mr. Lorcha was passing by and dragged us back to dry land. It took all his strength, I'll wager. A thousand, A thousand things, thanks, kind stranger. stranger! Without your bravery, we'd never have gotten out of that ditch alive! No, sir, that if you ever need anything, and it's within our power to help, you can count on us! Even it's beyond our power to help! That's too kind of you. It was nothing, really. Nonsense! You went out of your way to... Don't worry about it. You should head back home now. Take care. No! We can't thank you enough! Oh, one moment, both of you. That sewage could well contain harmful compounds. I'm something of a doctor. Let me give you a prescription. Make sure to use the medicine and get some good rest. There you go. I don't know what to say. Uh, sorry to trouble you. <laughs> uh, we'll take our leave now. Be careful on the back. Wouldn't want to find ourselves in another ditch now, would we? Here, that's the prescription he gave us. A paper flower? It's beautiful. Did Locha make this? That's right. He wrote down the prescription and folded it into shape. <laughs> A man of romantic sensibilities, one might say. Mm. The paper looks familiar. Can I open it? <laughs> of course. We'd already opened it when we showed it to the pharmacy. Uh, we were planning on handing it over to the Realm Keeping Commission. We suspect it's probably our best chance of tracing him. We can take it off you. We'll let you know when we find him. Let me see... Uh, of course! What is it? It's the title page of the Angler Mystery! The prescription's on this side, but on the back there's... Huh? So that's what this is all about? Take a look yourself. The Immortal Spoiler? Ugh, some people just want to watch the world burn. 
I'm starting to think the Locha we envision doesn't square with a real one. Would a villain do a good deed like this? Oh, so he paid for the book and tore off the title page to protect people from the spoiler. He must be a fan of this book too. I knew angler mystery fans couldn't be bad. She always takes forever. Yes, you have extraordinary skills, and you earned her trust when you rescued her. If I had more people, I wouldn't have to ask for external help, but as things stand... Here's the situation. Lady Bailu, the Vidyadra Dragon Lady, has escaped from the Alchemy Commission again. I say again because the Realm Keeping Commission has seen more than a few of her bad-tempered escapes. Not imprisoned, exactly. Vidyadara customs are somewhat different from Sienjo native customs. Miss Bailu has incredible talents and is next in line to rule over the Vidyadara. It's normal that her people would want to keep a close eye on her. However, she also has somewhat of a free spirit. She always manages to find a way to escape her residence. A dragon lady isn't an official position. People address her that way out of love. The Vidyadara High Elder, on the other hand, is a position similar to a chief. It's been passed down from generation to generation. But only the Vidyadara that possess draconic features and inherit the Dragonheart can be successors. And Miss Bailu is the Vidyadara's future High Elder on the Lafu. The rumor has always been that she can heal the wounded merely by touching them and shedding tears. She also studied medicine in the Alchemy Commission. That's why her other title is Healer Lady. This must be your first time on the Sienjo. It's a long story. The Vidyadara is one of the three races that established the Sienjo Alliance. Their bloodline is different from us Sienjo natives. The Vidyadara are born with great vitality. The gift of the permanence, as they say. That's all you need to know. The rest is irrelevant to what's happening today. It used to be the duty of the Realm Keeping Commission to go after her and take her back to the Alchemy Commission. But this time is different. Because of the Stellaron Crisis, we're constantly short of manpower. Besides, even if we catch the Dragon Lady, we can't take her back anytime soon. I don't know if you heard, someone locked down the Delves connected to the Alchemy Commission. Now nobody can get in or out. It's completely cut off. Something very fishy is going on. That's what I want to know. I guess she sneaked out before the Delves were locked down. She might even know what happened in the Alchemy Commission. And those doctors came from apothecaries and other Delves. I've asked them and they don't have the slightest clue what's going on. I'd like you to help with two things. First, find the Dragon Lady and take care of her until the Alchemy Commission Delves are reopened. Don't lose sight of her. The second thing might be a bit hard to understand. I want you to stop her from treating the Mara Struck. Like I said, we don't have enough people. The Dragon Lady is smart. If we try to keep her in the Realm Keeping Commission Chancery, she'll sneak out the first chance she gets. <laughs> Trust me, it's happened before. Besides, it isn't a crime for her to run away from her residence. And even if it were, given her status, we couldn't exactly stick her in jail and throw away the key. You're the only person we can turn to. Being stricken with Mara isn't like catching a curable disease. All the healer lady can do is slow the process. 
Take you short life species as an example. Do you consider aging a disease? Aging can be slowed, but it's still unavoidable. Just like being stricken with Mara for the people of the Sienjo. Unfortunately, becoming Mara-struck is more terrifying than death. It's an inevitable curse in the blood of Sienjo natives. The Sienjo has long had other methods. When Mara is about to strike, the spirit fairs and judges of the Ten Lords Commission promptly take the afflicted away. It's not something the Alchemy Commission should be meddling in. Mara is scary, but it won't cause any harm if you have it under control. We have the Realm Keeping Commission and Cloud Knights here in Exalting Sanctum. More than enough to handle any eventuality. However, the Dragon Lady's Mara suppression could lead to Mara Struck falling under the Ten Lords Commission's radar. If we let her carry on, we'll have Mara Struck on every street corner. People will panic. Seeing as we're already dealing with one crisis, we need to be extra vigilant when dealing with the Mara Struck. This is not something that can be taken lightly. You're the distinguished guest of General Jing Yuan and Diviner Fu Shen. As such, you'll also have the full trust of the Realm Keeping Commission. Oh, one more thing. There's a lot of suspicion surrounding the Alchemy Commission these days. If you discover someone from the Commission on the hunt for the Dragon Lady, watch your step. Ah, don't fret. Looking after children is a pain, but as the General's distinguished guest, I know you'll do great. Ugh, Lady Bailu, I told you to follow my plan. You draw attention when you use your powers, and we still have to take care of the matter at hand. I was only tending to the sick. Besides, you weren't even here just now. Where did you go? You know full well about my situation, Lady Bailu. If there are people from the Ten Lords Commission present in the plaza, then... Uh... Who are you? You're not a Ten Lord Spirit Fair. Why are you trying to frighten people? <laughs> I only escaped... I mean, left the Alchemy Commission for an official medical visit. There's nothing more to it, okay? The nurse here can vouch for me. <laughs> Easy, Lady Bailu. He's clearly not from the Alchemy Commission either. Huh? Then don't scare me like that. Huh. Wait a minute. I've seen you before. In the plaza, I was surrounded by all those Mara struck. You rescued me, right? It was you. You came just in time. Bansia. You said you don't know the way from here, right? This guy's no pushover. He'll be able to help. No, Lady Bailu. I don't trust him. Please leave us. I'm taking care of Lady Bailu. You don't need to worry. over there you help us hide first we'll talk later lady bailu this way coming help us get rid of him please we'll have plenty of time to talk later I'll ask first, and then decide what to do. You there! Excuse me. I want to ask you something. <laughs> You're not the only one. Can you at least hear me out first? Have you seen a woman wearing an Alchemy Commission uniform? She was about the same height as you. I think she was heading towards the jetty. 
We walk the same path, but it would seem she's hiding from me. <laughs> Hmm. Very well, thank you. I'll head over to the jetty. The opposite direction? It can't be. I just came from that direction. Are you covering for her? You know something, all right. I have a few more questions for you. There's more to this Alchemy Commission doctor than meets the eye. I wonder if I can glean more clues from him. That's an Alchemy Commission doctor's uniform, all right. Dahao did say there was suspicion surrounding the Alchemy Commission. I better take this. <sighs> I better take this. Or maybe that's not necessary. Feels like I'm still missing an important clue. More investigation needed. That's an Alchemy Commission doctor's uniform, all right. Dahao did say... <sighs> I better take this. I better take this. Commission, right? I knew it! See? I told you this guy was trustworthy. Thank you for helping us. But I'm worried you being here could just complicate matters further. Please leave us be. Huh? Why were they looking for Miss Bonsia? That can't be right. They must have been looking for me. How is that possible? How can I prove the doctor from the Alchemy Commission was looking for Bonsia? But wait a minute. I'll keep looking. Here's the proof. Uh, this letter... Wait, I've heard of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. Aren't they those crazy followers that worship the Mara Strut and the Plague's author? But Bonsia's nothing like them. She wanted me to treat the Mara Strut. Lady Bailu, you promised you wouldn't tell anyone about that. Wanted her to treat the Mara Strut? Suspicious. Could she be a disciple of Sanctus Medicus? I wonder if I have any evidence. This is a prescription from the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. Bailu, can you take a look? The handwriting on this prescription is exactly the same as the one you gave to me. Bonsia, are you really from the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus? Huh? You're a liar! A great big liar! I'm sorry, Lady Bailu. 
I am a member of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, and that doctor from the Alchemy Commission was sent to catch me. But I... I never meant to harm Lady Bailu. On the contrary, by taking her away from that place, I was protecting her. I made a deal with Lady Bailu before we escaped. We have an urgent task to complete. Please, don't take her away. I should ask Bailu what she thinks about all this first. Huh? Treating wounds and diseases is one thing. Curing the evils of humanity? There I was thinking, someone helped me escape the Alchemy Commission because they genuinely wanted to help me! Huh. Enough. Being angry will stunt my growth. Let's put this behind us. I don't know much. If it weren't for those scrolls in the Alchemy Commission's Elixir Research Terrace, I doubt anyone in the Shencho would have heard of them. A long time ago, even by the standards of long-life species, the Xianqiu eliminated an organization that worshipped the Plague's author. Why were they eliminated? Because they held an incredibly dangerous notion. Xianqiu people wanted to be released from the threat of Mara and return to the stability of life and death. Yet the disciples of Sanctus Medicus believed that being stricken with Mara was a blessing, a natural evolutionary step in casting off the mortal coil. Sounds great, right? Well, only if you think becoming a monster devoid of all humanity is a good thing. That's why the Cloud Knights and Ten Lords Commission cooperated to eliminate the organization. But just because you can't see something doesn't mean it isn't there. It's like eradicating a sickness. Easier to do when the symptoms are visible. In hindsight, not only did the disciples endure, he expanded the organization in secret. The people of the Shenzhou have asked themselves that question thousands of times. Countless doctors and sages have dedicated their lives to researching a cure for the curse. Tragically, besides a few theories, no one has come to a definite conclusion. In truth, Nobody in this world can fully comprehend the curse of the plague's author. When symptoms strike, the Mara struck are quickly taken away by the spirit bearers and judges of the Ten Lords Commission. I just want to reduce their suffering and let them leave with dignity. But the people of the Realm Keeping Commission do have a point. How should I know? It's not like commission members walk around with Disciple of Sanctus Medicus on their foreheads. I'm sorry I wasn't honest with Lady Bailu, but <laughs> I had no other choice. I asked her to save my beloved. In return, I helped her escape from the Alchemy Commission. I broke many of the Vidyadara's laws, and the Alchemy Commission is bound to punish me. But I just can't let my beloved die. I don't have much time left, but go ahead. I thought we would be fine after we escaped. I didn't know those people would come after us. I, I just couldn't find a way to tell her I was a disciple and about all the things I experienced there. You've been nice to me, but you shouldn't have kept me in the dark. I hate when grown-ups hide secrets and only tell you half the story. Whew, it's such a headache. His name is Leon Mu. He's a short-life species that requested an elixir. I used to think that the suffering of short-life species was nothing. But my heart... <laughs> my heart ached when I saw him in such pain. It's something I never expected to experience in my lifetime. 
falling in love with a short life species. <laughs> Such a bittersweet feeling. That's when I thought of Lady Bailu, the dragon lady that can heal mortals through tears alone. But it would take 30 years for her to treat all those in need. I had no choice but to come up with this plan. Please. Please forgive me. I'm already showing symptoms of the Mara struck. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus regard the Mara struck as saints. They take all kinds of strange medicines to speed up the process. I was no exception. But since I met Leamu, I realized that these saints are horrible creatures. Even if I were to become immortal, to not recognize him, to forget him, or become something that he doesn't recognize. <laughs> That's why I stopped taking the medicines and escaped. Thanks to the Dragon Lady, I made it here safely. <laughs> she hid everything from me. But I promised her I'd save her beloved. After all these years, I'm still not used to seeing people suffer. <laughs> Lady Bailu. Bansia, tell us what you want to do next. I can't let the disciples of Sanctus Medicus or the Ten Lords Commission find us. We need to find a way to get to Cloudford without drawing their attention. I'm Guang Da, an orderly from the Realm Keeping Commission. If you have an urgent issue, please go to the Chancery. Uh, huh? Aren't you the healer lady? Uh, 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 uh. Shh. <sighs> if it's official business you're here about, you'll need to go to the Chancery. Da Hao and Song Yan should be there. I'm just an orderly. As for anything concerning the Dragon Lady, I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do. Hey, would you keep it down? You've got it wrong. That, that's not my ship, it's my friend's. My friend has a Starskiff travel permit and can help you leave quickly. I'm not the one who owns the ship. Just cut to the chase. Can we take the ship or not? Yes, you can, but please keep it down. I can take you there if the price is right. I, uh, I mean, my friend can take you there. So relax, hmm? How about it? Shall we set off? <sighs> Leonu, I must see him. Bansia, your symptoms are getting worse. I have some soothing tonic in my gourd. Would you like some before we set off? <sighs> Thanks, Lady Bailu. But we can't delay any longer. I told Leonmu to hide in a Cloudford shipping container. I couldn't let the disciples of Sanctus Medicus find him. Because I promised Leonmu I'd bring him an elixir of immortality. To make him one of the people of the Sienjo like me. You know that's one of the Shincho's ten unpardonable sins, right? Yes. But... I knew nothing about the treachery of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus back then. I only knew that people in the Alchemy Commission were involved in ancient clandestine medicines. But I was wrong. It wasn't a blessing of immortality. Not even a poor imitation. They were turning humans into monsters, weren't they? Short-life species are expendable to those maniacs. They use them in experiments to develop their medicines. <laughs> I don't have much time left. And I only have one solution left. Hey. <laughs> That's right. Lady Bailu, you still remember our deal, right? You help me escape the Alchemy Commission, I save your sweetheart. <laughs> Thank you, Lady Bailu. 
The place we arranged to meet up is ahead. Let's go. Uh, how can that be? Where is he? We agreed to meet here. My head... How can that be? Let her rest here for a while. I'll think of something. Try not to move, Banzia. But he's not here. We still need to find him. Nurse, get a hold of yourself. <sighs> Doctor's orders. Can you see if there are any clues nearby? I don't think Bansia's sweetheart would leave for no reason. Hey, we've got company, remember? Leave the patient to me. I'm the healer lady of the Alchemy Commission, after all. It looks like Banshia's sweetheart was tracked by the disciples of Sanctus Medicus and had to switch locations. I should go tell Banshia and Bailu. What happened? Did you find any clues? <coughs> the disciples of Sanctus Medicus already had their eye on this place. I just hope he's okay. Let's keep walking. No way. Do you know how bad your condition is? Don't worry. I'll find Yang Mu and treat him. Send Bansia back to the apothecary in Starskip Haven. No, I know exactly how bad my condition is. That's why I've changed my mind. I want to see him one last time. You'll help me, right? I have a favor to ask you. You've seen for yourself how dangerous the Mara Struck can be. If the time comes, Please, protect the Dragon Lady. Thank you. I'm glad to hear you say that. Targets. Lady Bailu, I can't go on anymore. Ah, uh, he isn't waiting for us here. Did he hide somewhere else? Lady Bailu, watch out! There you are. Z clearly failed then. Oh, and if it isn't the Dragon Lady, trying to make up for past sins, are we? I've heard enough out of you already. If it's a beating you want, allow me to do the honors. I'll deal with you in a moment, little girl. Men, take the traitor and make sure you get the list from her. <laughs> it felt that way until you opened your trap. Who are you? Where is everyone? Seize them! Are you giving me an order? Uh, you! Karmic Atonement. A Ten Lords Commission, Judge? <sighs> this Ten Lords Commission Judge packs a punch. 
Carpaccia, you. If she notices my symptoms, she won't hesitate. Why are the disciples of Sanctus Medicus pursuing you? I only see two of you in Alchemy Commission attire. You, girl, raise your head. You have a wandering look in your eyes. A Mara struck look, perhaps? just managed to escape before the Delves were locked down. Those evil men have been chasing us. This nurse is so scared she can barely stand. Hmm. Madam Shui the remnants of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus have been found in the southwest of Cloudford. This place isn't secure. You should leave immediately. Soldiers, see them on their way. judge I've ever come across. Bansia, are you all right? <laughs> I made it this far. I won't go back without seeing him one last time. Let's go this way and see if we can avoid those cloud knights. There are armed villains up ahead. If you're not on duty here, return to the city for your own safety. <laughs> He's right behind that door. We're almost there. But there are Cloud Knights stationed there. Wait, I have an idea. <laughs> we don't have time for storytelling. Didn't we pass some soldiers resting on the way over here? You know, the place where the Cloud Knights and the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus fought. <sighs> you said it, not me. Hmm, a spot of emergency treatment in exchange for some armor. Sounds fair to me. <laughs> Let's do what Lady Byler suggested. No time to lose. <laughs> Let's go. Just tell them your soldiers guiding me back to the Alchemy Commission. They won't know any better. Halt! What's with the kid? <laughs> Surely, you know the healer lady of Alchemy Commission. Hmm. <laughs> She does have horns and a tail. I heard the Dragon Lady likes to sneak away from the Commission, but I never thought I'd have the honor of seeing her in person. No! No! I haven't finished playing yet! I don't want to go back to the Alchemy Commission! Uh... <coughs> Is the nearest harbor up ahead? That's right. You don't seem very well, soldier. We have a military doctor up ahead. Don't worry. I have the dragon lady with me. I... I still want to play! I'm hungry! Don't take me back! I don't want to go back! I'm not going back! Access granted. Good work, soldiers. <clears throat> Thank you. my acting amazing? Let me tell you, a performance like that requires a lot of temper tantrum practice. <gasps> uh-huh. By the way, what's taking Bansia so long? <coughs> Why can't I take off my helmet? Why is my voice like this? Can you help me check? <laughs> it feels like something's caught. 
But she still has the senses. Oh, Lady Bailu. Is this a result of your healing? <laughs> Thank you. If it weren't for you, I... Me? It's my fault. I couldn't preserve you the way you were. You can't cure someone stricken with Mara. <laughs> it's already a miracle that I still have my senses. That I can talk to you. Hey. <laughs> Do you still remember what I said earlier? <laughs> if the time comes... Let's go. While I still have my senses. Wait. I feel a bit dizzy. What should I do? Serious imbalances of yin and yang? Cold and heat? Um, I just need a rest. Lady Bailu, don't forget our deal. Stop calling it a deal! I made a promise. I'll heal him. Don't worry. I'm so sorry. It's because of me that all of you are in danger. Enough talk. Here, I'll pour the medicine through the helmet. Thank you, Lady Bailu. But I can't fill the gap between my skin and the helmet anymore. We've arrived. Is he not here either? Mm. He's cautious by nature. Do you remember his note? He told me to come alone. But you already... He won't show himself if you're here. <coughs> I'll call out to him. Please, you two, find somewhere to hide. Remember our promise. I remember. Let's go. <laughs> Leon, <no>. Monster! <laughs> Leon, no. <laughs> Help! Oh no! Let's hurry over! I can't hold on any longer! <laughs> Do it! Don't forget! The promise! Do you think she saw him one last time? Grown-ups are complicated, huh? Let's keep heading in this direction until we find him. Are you from the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus? Or the Ten Lords Commission? Don't touch me! I didn't do anything! That's right. I'm here to heal you. <sighs> You're finally here. First, I was being chased by the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. Then I ran into the Cloud Knights. Then I thought I heard Bancia's voice, but I ran straight into a monster. <sighs> what a day. But if Bancia sent you, then where is she? Isn't she with you? What do you think? Should we tell him the truth? What? Monster armed to the teeth? That was Bancha? You're lying. It's true. 
She had to disguise herself in order to meet you. How is that possible? Could you take me there? Just to confirm. This is Bansha? This hideous creature? Hey! I know you're probably in shock, but... She changed out of her original clothes, right? Ugh. There's no point in searching the body, then. Did she give you any secret boxes or letters? Search? For what? You don't know? Ugh, she left me with nothing! Was she playing me this whole time? The list of the names of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. With that list, I'd be able to blackmail the disciples into giving me the elixir of immortality. Or I could submit the list to the Cloud Knights to avoid banishment from the Sien Cho. That woman promised me countless times. In the end, I finally trusted her. I genuinely thought she'd offer me change. But in the end, she failed at the most important hurdle. Or maybe she failed from the very beginning. She probably lied to you too. Of course not. I have more important matters in places other than the Sien Cho. Elixirs and immortality are just a means to an end. I won't stay on the Lofu. <laughs> Sweetheart? That was her wishful thinking. I wasn't interested in the slightest. No way. You thought so too? Heal. What? Let me heal you, so I never have to lay eyes on you again! Huh? Great idea! Seeing as I'm due to heal him anyway, do your worst! Wait, what are you doing? For the next 30 years, he'll hiccup uncontrollably every day. What? He deserved it. <laughs> That's the price he paid for my lenience, and it still wasn't enough. <sighs> anyway, you know any good hiding places? I'm still on the run. Express? What's that? Hmm... The Xianzhou is still in a mess. I better stay in Starskiff Haven for the time being. I'm sure there'll be fevers and headaches to take care of before long. Bansia asked me if I like treating people. Like I said, it's as easy as eating and drinking for me. I don't like or dislike it. But this whole incident has made me wish I knew more about the Mara Struck. Thank you. Maybe meet again at the food stalls of Starskip Haven. Bye! Okay? 
Huh? Why is D-Ting talking to you? I should be the one getting messages from cute little animals. Uh, I think I'm a better fit, that's all. Uh, never mind. No need to get offended. The first time we met D-Ting was during the Kafka hunt. I could tell there was a mysterious connection between us. Whenever he barked, I understood what he wanted to say. Take the message he sent you. Woof, 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 woof. Meaning, hello, dear. I found a strange thing at the port of Cloudford. You may want to come and have a look for yourself. Hey, enough with the passive aggression. The simple truth of the matter is that I can understand him. So what did D-Ting find at the port? Come on, let's go check it out. <coughs> Little D-Ting says he's been dutifully searching for clues all over the Sienjo. He notified us as soon as he found something strange. <coughs> so what does he want us to take a look at? Tracer, please take it to the seat of divine foresight, so the Cloud Knights have the necessary intel to act swiftly. Ah, oh, so it's a recording device. Deeting must have heard its signal and called us over here to investigate. You can't disqualify him just for being a little baby. If he's the General's retainer, there must be more to him than meets the eye. Eh, we're not that old ourselves, right? And yet, here we are! Express passengers on trailblazing expeditions! Uh, given everything that's been happening on the Cien Show recently, I reckon the only fugitive worthy of a retainer's attention... would be a Stellaron hunter. I wonder how he's getting along. Blade tracking entry. Traces run cold at Starskiff Haven. I'll have to ask the Cloud Knights in the area if they saw anything. Captain, could you spare a moment? Yen Ching? Why are you all the way out here on the front lines? Shouldn't you be back at the seat of Divine Foresight? The General already has a lot on his plate. As his retainer, it's my duty to share the burden. Nothing new to report, I assume? Correct. After this blade escaped from the shackling prison, he disappeared into thin air. I wonder if he's even still on the ship. Or perhaps he had no intention of escaping in the first place. <sighs> what foul demons found their way across the stars to wreak havoc on the Lofu? That's why I'm here, to help the General eliminate those demons. Is that so? I didn't receive any orders from the General. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is a covert operation. Then shall we dispatch a few knights for this operation of yours? I appreciate the gesture, but the fewer people who know about a covert operation, the better. Making a big show of it will only scare the snake deeper into the grass. A good hunter must operate alone. Dispatch a few knights. <laughs> How incapable does he think I am? I might be young now, but just you wait. The Skyfaring Commission really made a mess of this. Who knows if we'll ever find all these missing ships. If the Psycrane hadn't been damaged, we could have extracted some footage. <sighs> That's no longer an option.
The perimeter is well guarded, but there are no traces of the fugitive passing through. It seems he has no intention of leaving the Lofu for the time being. Starskiffs are blocked from entering or exiting. There's no way the fugitive got through. But if he fled toward the interior of the ship, it'll be hard to track him down over such a vast area. Hmm, a fugitive would still have to rely on Starskiffs to travel between different delves. If we start by investigating the star skiff he stole, maybe we can get a lead. Guess it's back to the docks again. What's this? This kind of wound is not the work of a cloud knight. The best prey is one that leaves traces. Here, Di Ting, let's follow the scent. Uh, civilians are still getting attacked? Where are the Cloud Knights? Hey, don't panic! I'll get you out of there! Huh? They were on their feet a second ago. Hmm. Thank you for your assistance, young man. Just doing my job. The port has been sealed off. Why are you here alone? I came with a merchant ship. The shadows of old friends have returned to my thoughts of late. I came to reunite with them and relive old times. Who would have imagined the Lofu could become such a dangerous place? You chose a bad time to visit, I'm afraid. There's been an incident. It won't take long for the General to fix it, though. This place isn't safe. We should head to the nearest Cloud Knight garrison. By the way, did you see a man with long hair and black clothes around here? You... you can't see? Uh, uh, apologies, I, I thought... <sighs> My name is Yun Ching. I'm registered with the Cloud Knights. And your name is? Jing Liu. Nice to meet you. Um, Miss Jing Liu? Allow me to lead the way. We might have to take a bit of a detour, but I promise to get you to the Cloud Knight safely. Where exactly are we headed, young man? To the docks. Don't worry, you'll be safe. So, are you from one of the other Sienjo ships? The Yao Qiang? The Fang Hu? I'm from the Song Chung. The Song Chung? There's a ship called the Song Chung? Why haven't I heard of it? Miss Jing Liu, how long has it been since you last set foot on the La Fu? Are you always this talkative? Uh, just making conversation. I wanted you to know I was still here. <clears throat> Let's get going, miss. Careful, take your time. Hmm, where do we go from here? Shh, quiet. We've got trouble to deal with first. Wait here a moment, miss. I'll be right back. Where did these guys come from? Huh, the general was right. There's a threat lurking on the Xianzhou itself. You are quite the sword master, young man. Uh, you... you saw that? I heard it. A sword whistles through the air and rings out upon contacting the enemy. Whilst invisible to the eye, such signals reveal the quality of one's swordplay. As a musician listens to the notes of a song, so a poet listens to its rhyme. And in the flow of combat, a skilled swordmaster delivers both with their blade. I'll wager the Cloud Knights capable of wielding six flying swords at a time. Number few, indeed. Uh, <laughs> thanks, miss. However, your zealousness inhibits your ability to hide your line of attack. Huh? Which causes your sword's song to become somewhat mumbled at the end. 
<sighs> I guess the connection between music and swordplay is real after all. The general told me something similar. He said my swordplay was too proud and angular. He said it lacked the maturity required to win the title of sword champion. <sighs> sword champion? If I recall correctly, that title is bestowed on one who reaches the pinnacle of swordsmanship in the Cloud Knights. <laughs> but that was a long time ago. Right! Ever since the sedition of Imbibator Lune, the title of Sword Champion has gone unclaimed. But once everything settles down and the combat art ceremony returns, it's a title I'm determined to win. The Cloud Knights have many martial arts traditions. Who was it that instructed you in swordplay, young man? I see you're no stranger to the art. I won't keep you in suspense. My master is none other than General Jing Yuan of the Law Fu. General? I know you haven't visited for a long time, but surely you've heard of General Jing Yuan. He says he has no affinity with the sword, that his skills are getting rusty. Well, if that's true, I never noticed from his training. Uh, active star skiff, active star skiff, uh, there! This one goes past the Divination Commission and the Artisanship Commission. Well, my work here is finished. Now to make sure you get to a safe destination. Given the present circumstances, the Cloud Knight Garrison probably isn't a safe destination. Wouldn't you say? Correct. So we're not going there. I'm taking you to the Shackling Prison. Safe, well-guarded, plenty of food, and a place to sleep. Young man, if you wish to apprehend someone, shouldn't you have a reason? Suspicious behavior and half-truths. Those alone are reason enough. You think you can fool me just because I'm a child? A sealed-off port with a stranded passenger? Unlikely. Not to mention you walking the whole way here without so much as a stumble. You can see as well as I can. The biggest giveaway was your comment about my sword play. Correctly guessing the number of swords from the sound alone? <laughs> You'd have to be more than human. You're not blind at all, are you? I never claimed to be. You came up with that yourself. Uh... Fear not, young man. I hold no grievance against you, and have never held ill intent towards the Sienjo. The black veil covering my eyes is merely proof of my resolve to never look back. To never fall again into Mara and destruction. I came here to catch one person. It's quite fortunate that our paths have crossed. The one you're looking for, is it Blade? <sighs> he goes by Blade nowadays. A fitting name for someone who dedicated his mind and body to the ways of the sword. Take me to him, young man. You are no match for me, and therefore, no match for Blade, either. Let me accompany you. There is no need to throw your life away. <laughs> We've not even drawn swords yet, and you declare yourself the winner? Let me offer you a word of advice. Don't underestimate me. <sighs> I was hoping to avoid a conflict with the Cloud Knights. How about this? Let's have ourselves a little contest. We can use the abominations that have infested the Lofu as target practice, and see whose sword can slay more and slay faster. And if I win? Then I will obediently follow you to the Shackling Prison and receive whatever judgment awaits me there. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll keep my end of the bargain. But if I win, you have to share Blade's whereabouts with me. Fair enough? A 
Cloud Knight never gambles with official business. But in any case, you won't beat me. <laughs> I admire your confidence. But what was it you said earlier? About declaring a winner before swords were drawn? It would seem we've cleared every abomination from the area. Let's find another location and continue our contest. May the best Swordmaster win. This place is brimming with Mara, the perfect environment for honing one's skills. Surely slaying abominations doesn't count as gambling with official business? How do we tell who's won? We go from here to the end of the path without leaving a speck of abomination behind us. The first one to the end wins. Deal. Lead the way. What if you're just using this as a chance to escape? <laughs> Jing Yuan trained you all right. Where did she go? I... I didn't even see you overtake me! Too slow, young man. But... how is that possible? What kept you this time? Huh? You'll need to work harder. Otherwise... You won't even catch me in a star skiff. I haven't had this much fun in a long time. Uh, uh? A long time has passed since I wielded this sword. The heat of combat nearly cast me into the darkness. Come, young man. I'll let you finish up. Your final move was the only one that didn't disappoint. I... I lost? <sighs> Our contest has not yet come to a conclusion. For I have yet to make my final move. And the field has no opponent. Unsheathing this sword without merit is to blaspheme the divine will of the Rainbow Arbiter and invite calamity. You... Even with your strength, if you were to cross paths with Blade, it would mean death for you. I can give you a more dignified end than dying at his hands. To die as a swordmaster, having witnessed the perfection of my technique, refined a thousand times over. What say you to that, young man? You have courage. I'll take those records you found. Thank you, young man. That move was a token of my appreciation. We were fated to meet this day, and in days to come. <sighs> this mysterious woman also wants to find the whereabouts of Blade. No, 
No, no matter what she wants to do with the fugitive, she must not be allowed to get to him first. I have to pick up the pace. No. No, no matter what she wants to do with the fugitive, she must not be allowed to get to him first. I have to pick up the pace. And that's... the end? There's nothing else in the operations log? Uh, that Jinglio seems pretty dangerous. Uh, the Stellaron Crisis sure has attracted a lot of strange people to the Law Fu. Shouldn't we hand this over to Jing Yuan as soon as possible? Without a doubt, this Jade Tracer belongs to Yang Xing. I can't thank you enough. You already accessed the recordings? Uh, he accidentally pressed a button. No harm done. She was my mentor and my superior when I was a member of the Cloud Knights. However, she left the Sienjo a long time ago. If you see her, be sure to keep your distance and notify me immediately. He took on the charge of pursuing a major criminal. It is not my place to impede him for fear of his well-being. That is the nature of the Cloud Knights and their duty. I do have confidence in him, though. <sighs> Forgive me. But I cannot disclose this information. Thank you again for your help, friends from the Express. The situation remains unpredictable, so take care. I hope to be able to drink and talk freely with you once again, when everything is settled.